let's not waste any time. Call to order of the May 13 Conservation Commission uh, meeting. Uh, first item of business is uh, a discussion regarding 27 Dustin Road. Um, Mr. Cameron Mello is... Good evening. How are you, sir? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Um, so the last time we met to discuss um, the, the topic at, at issue is um, some areas of fill um, at the end of Dustin Road, a little bit on your property, a little bit in the easement um, at the end of the street, um, leading up all the way even to the right of way for the train track. Um, and it's building up and um, it, it, the reason it's before us is because it's, there's wetlands back there and um, it's, it's against a state law to fill wetlands. Um, so so um, we understand you're a new resident and that you know, not all of this fill is, is your doing, you know, clearly. Um, but we're hoping to get you and other residents on Dustin Road that might have, you know, um, an ability to, to do their part in maybe getting this remedied and, and getting it out of there and cleaning it out a little bit. Okay. So, um, as, have you seen anything new sort of dumped there since the spring cleanup? I haven't, I haven't no. been over there. No. No? Okay. All right. Um, there is a report of um, yard clippings going down there weekly. Oh, really? Yeah. An, an anonymous tip? Mm. Okay. Um, do you have any thoughts or ideas of, of ways to address this or uh, anything you want to? You know, all I can say is the uh, time I moved in, I didn't know the rules. And, uh, now I do, and I won't do it again. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms are, are of. Are other people coming across your property to dump their waste? Well, I mean, my neighbors lived there 30 years, and uh, I mean, over there, I mean, they all go over there to dump their yard clippings and everything. I'm not going to tell them that they can't do it. I just moved in. They've been there a lot longer than me. So. They've got seniority. Yeah. But they, they don't come across your yard, do they? Um, no. No. That's not my land. That's, uh, yeah, I think that's Redding's land. Um, um, in terms of the some of the fill that's on your property, do you have any designs or aims to um, pull it out, um, remove it? Are, are you, are you asking for us to accept the fill in place, or, um, which I'm not sure we can legally do? <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how I would do that. I don't know how I would get it out of there. It'd be kind of tough. But, uh, I don't know. How do people usually go about doing that? You guys do uh, me. <coughs> variety of ways, uh, shovels, excavators. Um, you know, there's, there's depending on how deep it is and the extent of it. Well, I mean, I mean one, I of, in, one of the. I, I just wanted to make my land look nicer. Yeah. I didn't know I was doing any harm. Yeah. No. Yeah. This kind of sucks. <laughs> no, I. You guys no. call me out for it. And all they want to do is work on my yard, and you guys are telling me I can't work on my yard. The are, are you aware that the town does have a compost center, and you can take your yard waste to that compost center, and better yet, they have processed green compost that you can have free and bring it back to use in the plantings in your yard. So I it's didn't, a double. I didn't know that. that that's that would be in I the just future. Moved in, uh, it was five months ago. So in, in the future, you can take your yard waste to the compost center and come home with a nice uh, right lo load of, uh, of compost to help with your planting. You do have to get a, um, a Reading parking sticker. You go to the police station, it's 25 bucks. It allows you to park at the train station. It allows you to go to the compost center. It 
allows you to be recognized as a resident of Reading. There are a lot of better things. <laughs> All right. So now I know that. That's, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. So the only other thing that I'm going to tell you is that uh, it wasn't that you can't fill. You just can't fill without a permit. Okay. So if you took that first step and probably identified those low spots and told everybody what you wanted or what you were going to do and when you were going to do it, um, probably wouldn't be here. Right. So the next time it's not, hey, I can't clean up my yard. It's I'm within that jurisdictional area, so I need to make a phone call to the conservation office. All right. So. Fair enough. Okay, any other comments or questions from other commission members question at this point? Um, this, this area right here, I guess that would, I don't know what side that is, but the, was that the side that had the um, mulch that we walked across? I think so. I, I think so, because we, yeah. So, is it Mr. Mello? Yes. Did you, did you um, put the mulch in? Side, it kind of sort of goes into the little stream, didn't it? Between the trees and yeah, yeah. Did you actually put that stuff there? Well, yeah. Okay. Is it possible to remove that stuff? <coughs> yeah, I'd say it's possible. Okay, would you? <laughs> <laughs> um. What was, the, best. what was the purpose of doing that? Was it to gain access on the other side, or was it to level out your your yard, or? Well, I just put it around the trees to make it to beautify the land. That's all I was wanted to do was make my yard look nicer. And I just moved in. You know, when you, you just move in, you want to make your yard look nice. So I was, <coughs> But you're just the, the main thing is that you walk away tonight and you're aware that you cannot put that material I am in the now. Lines. Okay, well, that's that's the main main purpose. Yeah. Of it. Do it again. We don't have an enforcement order, correct? We don't. Okay. No, okay. we don't. Well, that, that was the main purpose, just to make sure you understood. And if um, if you're chatting with your neighbors, then you might tell them of your experience here and uh, help them. Uh, cooperate with the with the laws and regulations. Sounds good. The 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 way this impacts the town of Reading in general is when these fill materials get put in wetlands, it slows the water down, um, and it can create. You know, if you think about it, it's, I mean, I'm giving an extreme example here. So, but almost a mini beaver dam. You know, right. so. So everybody, so it reduces the drainage and the flow through town. So during these big storms that we get, uh, Reading in general is a very wet town. Uh, it's the headwaters of three major rivers. And um, these fill areas, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, um, kind of add up and become people's wet basement problems, kind of in whole neighborhood reaches. Um, so the, so, you know, I don't want to, I understand, I appreciate that you've come and, you know, I understand that you didn't know at the time that it was, wasn't allowable, um, but I, I wholly encourage you for the benefit of the town to spread the word to your neighbors about this and, and we need to, I mean, a little bit here or there, um, if it's not impeding the flow of water. I mean, we don't like to tolerate it, but to some degree we can tolerate it. But the problem is, you know, a little bit here becomes a little bit there, and next thing you know, right. people have three feet of water in their basements that they right. they pump out, and it comes right back in, and it, they pump, you know, so that, and uh, these channels are constantly getting clogged with debris. Yeah, that so, was my intention at first, because yeah. right here, you see, that's where the water is, that's where it fills up. I yeah. didn't go that far, I was wary of doing that. That was yeah. my intention to fill that area. It was yeah. just around the trees. Um, feel free to spread the word among your neighbors that we're keeping an eye on this and if we have to, we'll start sending enforcement notices, um, especially if there is evidence that people are putting fresh fill there. 
um, because it's going to become a new island soon. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and it's not meant to be that. I it's know. supposed to transmit the water effectively um, so that you know people uh, don't have property damage. Um, so um, thanks for coming in. I mean, we're, we're stick around. OK. Last time I came in, I was feel, to go. feel free. You're always stick welcome around. to. It's a public meeting. You're, you're welcome to. Um, <laughs> And if you have any actual pictorial e picture evidence of people doing this, okay. we can use that. I mean, I, I'm, I hate to say rat on your neighbors, but it's really hard to get people to admit that they did something wrong and then take ownership of it. We've got some real resistant people um, who are not willing to take responsibility <coughs> for their property or, or what they've done. So if you've got pictures, send them. <laughs> OK. Thank you. Um, um, at this point, I'm just going to, uh, Mr. Zamboris, if you want, there's a couple empty seats here in the middle. Okay. Um, I'm going to sit down all day. All right, all right. Since we have four minutes before we can have the next hearing. Yes, I just want um, to announce, if you'll excuse me a second, I just want to announce that the hearing for 306 <laughs> Main Street, which would have been at 710, has been continued. We're not going to discuss it until May 27. So if you're here for that hearing, um, we're not going to discuss it. So. Sorry, for which one? Say that again. Um, 306 Main Street. Pizza World. Pizza World. Pizza World. It's the lot next to the Bank of America Up there ATM. By, uh, Starbucks. Okay, so we will not discuss that at this meeting. Um, and before I move on, is there anybody in regards to Dustin Road who has a question or comment? No? Because it is a public hearing. You provide input. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, if we could, um, Brian, since you're here and George is here. Can you help me with my memory? Did we? I don't know about that. <laughs> We're gonna. <laughs> did, did we? Did we approve that bus stop in front of Stop and Shop? We did. Or, or Long? Or we was did. it Longhorn Long State? Long, we did. We did. It wasn't in front of Longhorn. No, no it was. No. It was in front of Stop and Shop. It was in front of Stop and Shop. To um, come up with a. Uh, area to do uh, some uh, replication or something. Okay. We did. Okay. I actually looked because I noticed it's in a place. I thought it was in the wrong place, but no. it's in the right place. I hope it's in the right place. Because <laughs> Tan Meeting passed the eminent domain also. I Tan Meeting passed an eminent yes. domain motion yes, to take the property. The company to sign the deed is still overseas okay. okay, so you'll come to us at some point in the near future with the mitigation. We were going to mutually come up with an area. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, one of the areas. Uh, discuss that another time but if it's okay. a complicated issue the area we first saw. right we, we, we'll, let's discuss it another we'll time. discuss it another time yeah thanks a little additional information tonight um okay then um let's discuss uh sturgis park we'll reopen that hearing um so the public hearing for sturgis park notice of intent number 270-0634 Sturgis Park Pine Ridge Road map map for lot 88 Town of Reading Engineering DPW is now reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act the Massachusetts General Laws chapter 131 section 40 as amended and the Reading General Bylaws section 7.1 the hearing will be conducted as follows the applicant will present his proposal the Commission will receive reports from its administrator and technical advisors. The Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the Chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and our questions are presented. Um, as I mentioned a few times, there's an attendance sheet at the front door, so please sign in. Um, and at this time, uh, I'd like the Commission to introduce themselves, starting with Chuck. Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Jamie Mullen. Rebecca Longley. Julie Roger, Reporting Secretary. And just for the record, introduce yourself. Um, George Zamboris, Town Engineer. Okay, thank you. Sir. Good evening. It's been a long time before we were, since we last discussed this project. I think it was just when the <coughs> snow started. Uh, and they, uh, as a result of uh, one of the site walks that um, well, the Commission had and I had, uh, to address some additional issues that the conservation had and then when I was there with Wetlands Preservation Inc 
one of the major changes on the plan, and it's probably why I delayed so much, is because I know you'd want to go out and look at it, is the entrance for the wing walls down as we approach uh, South Street. Originally, the intent was to reset the last 10 feet of it, or, or 12 feet of it. Um, but if you can see from the photos that were in uh, WPI's uh, report, um, probably the third, third set of photos, uh, it's uh, virtually impossible to reset that portion of the, all those uh, granite stones that are there. We're going to have to completely replace them. Uh, what we're proposing to do is, <coughs> excuse me, that's Howard. What we're proposing to do is um, take the granite stones completely out and put in the um, a gra a concrete gravity wall using the larger concrete stones you know, as manufactured by Shea Concrete or one of those one of those companies there. Uh, in addition, the last eight feet of the westerly wall. Uh, we are going to reset, and plus we also noted there's a large erosion area between that wall and the trees that are there. So we were going to put another set angling back and burying them into the earth to, uh, to make sure we retain that bank. So that's the major change. Uh, I'm sure you're going to want to go look at it. Uh, one of the issues with, with doing the uh, resetting of the wall on the easterly side <coughs> is there's definitely one tree that's going to have to be removed in order to gain access. Uh, the second one, I think we could probably get in without uh, moving it, but we're probably going to undermine it so much we'd probably have to take that tree down also. Do, do you know off the top of your head what uh, species, what type trees they are? I, I'm not positive. I would guess one may be a Norway maple. I'm not sure of the second. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm sure you know, all the rest of the information is just really delineating a little bit better on the plan what we had discussed before, the limits of... Um, where the uh, just the bank restoration would take place as far as the top half, and then the other the lower portion we were going to uh, throw, we'll be installing some uh, riprap along the uh, water line, and then restore the bank on the upper portion. Uh, it's just really delineating the notes in the plan, which we're really never on before. So the only major change since we last met in February to discuss this, I think, or whatever it was, uh, is really the additional work at the wing walls at the South Street entrance. So I'm sure you may want to go look at that. So, okay. And you have the you finally have the final report <coughs> of WPI. So at this point, any questions from the commission? I, I have a question on the cross section. Mm -hmm. Is that cross section going to be that entire forty feet? Of stream restoration? Um, that cross section will be for almost 90 feet. It's the middle section. Oh, okay. It's the middle section. It's the middle section. The, uh, we have a starting from the spillway. There's about 15 feet of the bank on the, on the southerly side that we have to uh, restore a little bit. There's a little washed out area on the right. north west easterly side that I added in. Then the first, and then we uh, skip about 40 or uh, so feet. And then the first 40 feet is just the upper portion of the bank being restored. The 90 feet is we will be doing the, uh, the riprap uh, armor on the bottom portion and re uh, reshaping the top portion and put vegetation. And the last 25 feet is just the top portion. By the top portion, that would be basically from the flow line up, almost. Uh, so in some cases, it's only the, the top foot. Sometimes it's about a foot and a half. But and will that be riprap vegetation? Nope, those or will be. That will be um, the geotech. That will be loom and vegetation based on the vegetation. Plan. Okay. So, are you saving some of? It? When I look at the uh, cross section. Um, the very top part it says existing vegetation plantings or soil bioengineering systems. So you're saving some. Whatever we there are there there is some vegetation near the top that we could probably save uh, in that air in that 90 foot area that 
most of the bank is fairly well eroded and there's yeah, it's and there's really yeah, not I, much I, there. Yeah, I remember. I so you know, for for essential purposes, we'll probably almost be replacing everything. Okay, and that's the table one, planting specs, shrubs uh, and the herbaceous mixes. Yes. Okay. Is this being funded out of the stormwater? Um, yes, it will be. Revolving fund. Mm -hmm. What's the engineering estimate for the cost? I haven't done one yet since we added the new section. I have to get prices on the uh, mm -hmm. on the um, materials for the wing walls. Mm -hmm. And will it will go out for bid or it will, go out for bid. it will go out for bid? Yeah, this is too much involved and too long of a project for DPW to do. And will they will will, um, will there be more detailed design done or Absolutely. is this it? No, there will be more details on the cross sections and everything. But you'll do that. <coughs> and it's um, you know obviously it will be geared to. Uh, be constructed late July, August, whenever the is virtually low no flow, flow or no flow, the driest time of the year. So you might have said this, but that existing wing wall downstream from the spillway is actually going to be removed. It's going to just be removed and reset. What it is is it's um, their one foot square rectangular uh, pre-stressed concrete ah, slabs. Okay. There's just three of them. Uh, with a pipe penetration through it, so okay. they're sound enough that we can just pull them out, establish a new uh, base for it, and set it and, and reset them. It's just a note I, have, I don't usually see. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have, well, I don't have it with me. I, I do have it with me. I can show you what it works like, <laughs> possibly. I think this, this is the picture here, yeah. This yeah, is a, yeah, there, yeah, it is there, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're pre stressed concrete. You know, they, uh, I don't know where they came from. That makes sense. I can guess. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a question. Just, um, just the general comment about design. So it, so it looks like. So the riprap will go, essentially to, the water line. It will go to the bed of the brook. brook. It will go to the small area in the bed to tow it in, then come up to just above the water line. To just above the water line. Um, See, it goes all the way to the bottom of the stream. Yeah, yeah, but I mean... Yeah, that's a little bit over-exaggerated into the stream. It's just the toe of it that's going to be in. Um, for this stream, do you have any sense of what some of your max velocities are? Yeah, I forgot to give you that, didn't I? It was um, approaching two feet per second on the 100 year storm. I'll, I can get that to, uh, to you for the, before the next meeting. I My question is just... Um, it's going to be good, some good sized stones in the bottom to make sure they stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, if. We don't want to. We're doing this because of all the erosion. We don't want to have to do it again. Right. I understand. I, I have seen at a number of professional seminars, you know, a really solidly vegetated bank can withstand some I, erosive flooding. I understand that, but we went through this in January or February at that meeting, and in, in the at that time, the the direction I got from the board was to put stones on the bottom. I'm more comfortable with the stones in this situation because you say two feet per second. I think it probably gets higher than that, but because all that drainage from Oh, it's a Howard huge drainage. Street yes. and everywhere I know, it's comes a huge there. And you can look at that erosion around those wing walls now. Slightly over a half a square mile of drainage. Yeah, I... I you, can, you can easily calculate stone size for velocity. Right, yeah, right. It's an easy calculation. And, and I don't know, the stones are just more stable, but you still get... Um, I mean, it doesn't. it's not like a... a concrete channel you don't prevent groundwater from coming in right. you still get right. habitat you get growth on those rocks that provide water no water quality treatment it'll quality still get silted up and sediment will travel in there and, right and, yes. right. and probably so, yeah. overtop the riprap i'm i'm just you know i'm just sort of i mean i know there's good technologies out there i'm just trying to ask the question about you I know. think t generally, um, 
where you see even in highly erodible soils, vegetation holding the banks yeah. is where you have a natural meander and you put it in the low velocity areas. This is a straight channel. Now, if we we're going to go in and realign re, re, uh, that channel to get some uh, slow, slow velocity areas, I think vegetation would be appropriate. But in that straight channel, I mean, ultimately, I'm just more it needs, it needs with to stick stone. together. You'd have to increase the cross-sectional area to drive yeah. the velocity to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and, and it naturally has. I mean, in that area where it's eroded right now on the outside, I mean, that's. Uh, yeah, I, I've. I think I believe the channel was naturally around eight and a half to nine feet wide in that area. It's over twelve, yeah. and, it, and it's gonna, we're not going to narrow it back to whatever it is. We're going to just right. start from where we can and come back yeah. up. Can I skip getting some questions? These hot armor guys, I'm getting a little frustrated with. Go ahead. Um, did you guys talk to anyone about uh, softening up the bank and using the core log? I mean, bring someone in, not just look at websites, because you know this is something that I've this seen used before. This is and what WPI had recommended and suggested, and that they've had approvals right. of so the DEBP before. This is their recommendation, not mine. Yeah. So, did you talk to uh, the New England Environmental and ask them what they do? They're usually the go-to company that does all this type of work. Uh, I don't know if they didn't. Pa I I didn't for this. I don't know if they've in, they have in the past. So I'm just surprised that there's this. You know, this is a park and it has a natural bank, and then there's 90 feet of hard armor and going in there. I could understand the wing walls and some of the other stuff that's in there, but just to turn it back or to change it into something that's going to be permanent, and I understand the need for permanency in this area, but I think you might be able to achieve it with something else and soften it up. And I was just wondering if that exercise took place or, you know, you just came up with... Um, you know, one one alternative. The exercise was through WPI. That's why we hired them to develop that, to develop what it should be. That question was proposed to them whether it, it could be done because at, at that time, it didn't have a direction of the uh, commission of, uh, you know, we had your suggestions on doing something else and I left it up to WPI and this is what they came back with. Um. One thing about this proposal is, um, so so basically you're saying is between the these lines here, there would be that hard armor yeah. between yeah. here between and the here. Middle two. The middle two. The middle two. See that and ninety foot section. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, and that's I'll, where that's where right now you've you've lost over, you know three to four to five feet of the bank. Speaking of which, so that happened what like two springs ago, or like uh, last spring, I or what? Whenever that was, I don't need an exact date. I don't think date. it's just over um, one over one stone or a couple of years. It's been a period of years. That was during a, um, so it was a groundwater discharge that eroded the bank. You know, it kind of became a little bit of a spring. That's and you that's went what in, that's what started the whole thing, and, and that's right, and that's, and that's down what at this location over here. It right. was just we were just looking right. at a. At that time, they were look, only looking at about a 15, 20 right. foot bank repair. Right. And then after the commission went and inspected it, it turned into a life of its own. We went to, to a very minor okay. project to a very major project. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. And, and the, the reason, reason is, if you patch an area of bank erosion, particularly if you harden it, it's It'll just going to get somewhere it. else. Right. Yeah. Right. Because the energy Kurt, has to be Kurt Young had a fantastic somewhere. solution to what we probably uh, caused the uh, leak in the dike, let's say, in the little initial area. Um, probably said it was a rodent. It was what? A rodent. Because when we dug, oh, well, we dug down, we didn't really find anything, and, and he's run into those problems many times. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice preferred channel. Yeah. They um, probably burrowed a hole through there and started yeah. the water uh, flowing through. Yep. Because it flows through when we flood the area out. That's yeah. when we had the problem. Did you see that additional erosion this spring? No. no. So, because I know you had gone in, you did some drilling, and you had backfilled with some material, and you had put out some some erosion control of some we sort put, out we, there. We put up some sandbags at the yeah. top because the um, top of the bank was put back a little bit shallower right. than what it should have been. Right. Right. Um, they want to live in the waterfront too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. 
Um, I, we can look at other areas again if that's what the commission wants, but no, it's. I don't. We're only, we're only going to be going back to January again. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to propose that this project get bigger. That's not my, you know. I think addressing the erosion control is essential to the stream, but also understanding that a stream at a certain velocity rate has a certain sediment hunger to it, depending on the, you know, there's a certain sediment load that a stream can carry. Um, and the velocity is a big determiner of what the particle size is gonna be. I mean, you know this what the particle size is going to be and what the load is that that stream can carry. It um, won't be changing the velocity. Or increasing erosion. Yeah. And then the third concern of mine is reestablishing habitat as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> you mean at the top of the bank or in the stream? In the stream. Other than right at the edge where we're towing in the riprap, we're not going to really be touching the stream. The stream will take care of itself. And, and actually, that riprap will provide a diversity of habitat that we aren't seeing now. How's that? Because those rocks provide habitat for a lot of uh, benthic organisms that cannot live in just the muddy bottom and the muddy bank on the other side. So now you have one side that's natural. Uh, Soil with some vegetation, you know, have a bottom, and then you'll have some rocks. So you have three different kinds of habitat. So you're saying with the riprap being from the west side mm -hmm. only? Mm -hmm. Do you have some studies on that? I'd like to see that. Well, I mean, it's pretty basic well, stream it's, ecology. Well, yeah, it's different. It's basic stream organisms ecology. organisms like caddisflies, you know, right. get into those Doing interstitials. The, yeah. But that side is going to be the higher velocity side. No, I have that channel pretty straight at that area. I'm well, it's sure it, that's the curving different. part. So it's going to take the higher velocity on the outside. Even right? better. <laughs> Even better? Well, okay. I just, um, you know, clearly there's a lot of uh, knowledge to be gained from this, and I, I just uh, I just want to make sure it's, it's done appropriately. Um, any other questions from commission members at this point? Any questions from the public about this project? None. Okay. Oh, I, I do. Go George, we, the, the Sturgis Park, Friends of Sturgis Park, have been so involved. Have they, are they aware of this? Are they on board with this? I, I really don't know. I mean, we're just really doing maintenance to the channel, so. It's uh, the overall plan for the park. We're not really affecting anything. But what we're doing now doesn't affect anything of that. Sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. So just to summarize, your proposed bank restoration um, in these areas outside of the riprap protection, those are um, vegetated areas, or is where, basically this cross section is this? This applies we'll where we'll be vegetating above the water line from here to there. Yep. It's just that yep. from the, from six inches. Uh, yeah, the six inches or eight inches above the water line, if you have the flow levels. Work. But between in between the two middle lines, we're doing the riprap for that whole reach from the ninety feet. The ninety we're feet in the middle, wrap. and then what's happening we're on doing, the outskirts of that riprap? Riprap in that section. Gotcha. And we're doing the top bank restoration in the entire line. Okay. So no bank restoration in those? Lower bank, no lower bank. No lower bank restoration no. outside of the riprap. No, it's just, there's, it's just the top portion. I mean, the, there's some areas <laughs> where there's some vegetation and some areas where there's virtually nothing. As a matter of fact, That's what I the, opposite side of the opposite side of the channel is severely undercut. Um, yeah. You know, and there's, there's some grasses here and there and some moss, that's it. There's not that much vegetation on the other side, but you know, it's, we're gonna leave that intact, leave that natural. Yeah, okay, so what's the zone off the top of bank that uh, the vegetation would extend to, roughly? I'm not sure I understand. You mean how far back? How far, how back far, how far bank? away from the bank does that zone of vegetation planting go? Only to the top of the bank. So in the high water to the top of the bank. The width of that vegetation zone on the plan. 
it's just going to be a single strip of shrubs it's, it's up to on the top, It's up to the top of the bank. We're not okay. going beyond the bank. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to understand that. Okay. Any other questions from conservation members or the administrator? Um, I have one. If, uh, if you guys you guys uh, went on site visit and had George there to understand this better. I think I would take the opportunity to see right. if um, you know Mickey Marcus of uh, New England Environmental, you know, had some suggestions for these armored because there is there is a um, heat factor that we're talking <coughs> about, you know, by adding all that also. Uh, just it, it's so standard just to add riprap. I mean, it would be nice to have a second option around here and for the engineering department to get used to a second option so we would always have two things to you know pull from our quiver so you amenable to that yep i'll have kurt young there too okay so they can talk their own language yep that's fine um so are we Becca? continuing this and we're going to have a site visit i i don't i would it sounds like that's sounds like that's proposed at this point um, um, is there a motion to continue? Do we need another site visit? Did you? I've seen it. <laughs> I would like to see it during the construction if I'm going to see it, but I would hate to miss the window. I don't know if a site visit would cause that, but I'd hate to miss the window. If we got to, if we got to do the design and then put it out to bid, I'm thinking the time might be getting tight right now. I, I want to be. <coughs> I want to be opening bids by the beginning of July. The time is tight. Yeah, yeah <laughs> if, if you don't get. I, it. I, I basically the design has to be finished <coughs> and the plans and everything have to be finished and advertised by you know, the second week of June. See that that would mean if he can't design until he has his permit, and if we continue this, he wouldn't have his permit before the June seventh. Yeah, I mean. You know, we can go later in June. It's just that if we have a nice dry period in July, I, I don't want to miss it. Yeah. And you never yeah. know. August may be rainy. You, know, you don't yeah. know. I could go either way. Yeah. I think it would be nice to have a site visit during construction. Though. Um. I could see this. I could see this. Um, I, I would prefer an additional site visit. That's just my personal opinion. Um, That's why I if asked you'd like to, to see what the commission, if anybody needed to see have an additional site visit. I know what it looks like. I understand the plan. I understand what it looks like. So yeah, you, you and I actually spent a fair amount of time. I think, I th I think it was you and I. Did, yeah, yeah. So I'm good, but if you have the, have you seen it, Becky? I've seen it a while ago during the winter. Right before the winter, actually. But if, if, if somebody feels the need to see it, I think that's, uh, I don't understand it, I don't support that, but I don't need to see it again. Yep. That's why I skipped that one Monday. Right, right. So I move we continue this um, to the next available meeting, which is the 27th. What? The 27th? Um, May 27th. 27th. Yep. <laughs> which we might have Allison at, um, which would be good. Um, so is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. So we'll continue it when, okay. to May 27, is that right? And yes. when will you schedule the site work? Site visit is Monday night. Monday night? Two days before. So two days before. Right. Yeah. Two <coughs> days before the meeting? Yep. Yeah. So if you come up with some drastic changes, we're not Five, twenty-five. We won't have our oh. rod until the end of June. Oh, it's Memorial Day. Can we move it to Saturday, Sunday morning? We could do that. I mean, I, oh, maybe not for a holiday weekend. It would have to be Tuesday night. Yeah. Who's going to go to the site? Walk. It would be me. You have time during the week. Yeah. I have time during the week. So we could do this during one during the, the week. I could do it during yeah. the week sometime. Yeah. There you go. 
We'll probably do easier to get. Why don't we, don't we we'll just send out some emails? Why don't we coordinate time. by email yeah. a site visit outside of those time frames? Okay, that's not a public event anyway, so you're welcome to come out to Sturgis Park. It's a public park. But. <laughs> okay. So you're talking about having the site visit possibly next week? Yeah. yeah. That'll be good because I plan, yeah. on, I plan on taking Memorial Day week off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, um, why don't we? Um, so that's been continued. We'll arrange the site visit for next week. So why don't we um, get on with the notice of intent? This is. I assume, George, you're also representing this next one I am. for Howard Street. Okay, so do we have a, um, a DEP number? No. Okay. Okay, so notice of intent for um, the public hearing for notice of intent, 115, 119 Howard Street. Map, um, not sure what the map number is, lot 10-80, 10-168, and 10-170, DPW Engineering is now being opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws Section 71, 7.1. Um, the applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and town departments. The commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. Um, there's an attendance sheet, which I think most of you have signed in. If not, it's at the entrance. Please do so. Um, and at this point, uh, Julie, would you please introduce yourself? Julie Roger, Recording Secretary. Rebecca Longley. Jamie Mullen. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Chuck Trani, Administrator. And just George, for the record, George, George Sambor is Town Engineer. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, what have we got here? Okay, uh, this is a um, on Howard Street. Just shortly after uh, you turned in off West Street, uh, there's a, a channel that runs between houses 115 and 119 uh, Howard Street. Uh, the stream receives runoff from the Howard Street drainage, some of the um, neighboring yards. Right now, off the top of my head, and also some of the West Street uh, drainage. Uh, it's not a extremely large drainage area, um, and the <coughs> channel itself is two, two and a half feet wide. Uh, the f after you after you have the initial uh, discharge from the uh, drainage system on Howard Street, you probably have a little bit of a 15 foot open area. Uh, then it, uh, the, for the most part, the next 100, and 100 or so feet is really lined with uh, stones in the bottom. Um, there's there's a, a lot of saplings over the years that have grown into mature trees, which line the edge of the channel, top of the bank, uh, has, but has dislodged a lot of stones. We have roots going across the bottom of the channel. Um, I'd love to get them out, but I, the only way to do it, I mean, it's, it's the two largest trees there. I don't want to cut out the two largest trees. And to really do this channel the right way, you know, you'd have to cut every tree down there. And, and uh, I don't want to do that. And I'm sure the commission wouldn't be the happy about uh, that. And I'm sure the residents wouldn't be too happy about it. I know they're not. Um, so what, what our intention, George, this is the same stretch of stream that MWRE came in yes, with their Yes, absolutely. Back absolutely. In yeah. yeah. sucked up half the stream bottom. Yeah. Right. So, um, so basically there's really two issues with the channel that this uh, filing uh, is going to uh, propose to correct. Um, there's a lot of the stones that have fallen off the side from that little 12-inch, uh, 18-inch high uh, stone bank that are just impeding flow, causing, uh, causing uh, natural dams from branches or leaves or whatever they fall down. What I want to do is take those stones and put them in the side bank back where they belong and get them out of the bottom of the stream. Uh, that's the minor portion of the project. The, the, the major portion of the project is as you get to the rear of the property line of House 115, 
Uh, this whole area at one time, I don't know if you want to call it a greenhouse or whatever, but they, I forget what they sold. Uh, it was all one parcel. Um, and there's the remains of a concrete sluiceway uh, where the channel goes through and it is partially collapsed and choking down and choking down the channel to uh, effectively about 10 inches wide in some area. And, and that's the main <coughs> choke point uh, which is causing problems of the whole channel. Uh, the biggest disruption will be in that area. And we want to go, I want to go in there and completely remove all that concrete and just make it an earth, an earth channel. There's a natural channel, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you figure out access for this uh, for that portion of the project? We have we have an easement going down the center line. We will um, have to talk to the abutters to uh, find out what's the easiest means of access there temporarily that um, to uh, to access that area. Well, you, you're going to need some equipment to get yes, the exactly. for that for, to remove. Out. I mean, for the stones and everything, all that can be done by hand. But the concrete will have to be a, a, a small mini backhoe or something like that. Yes. So we will need you know to secure a means of getting in there, which would be outside the easement. Um, then from after the concrete spillway. Uh, you have a short section of the stream, then there's a 24 inch concrete pipe, another 20 feet of the stream, and then you get into the uh, wetland area uh, before it goes back into the key throw drainage system to the rear. Is there flooding there now near the sluice way? Uh, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure that I'm sure there has been. Uh, I think some of the residents here they can attest to that. I, that's what uh, first prompted this is because of the problems that it's creating. It, it looks like from this drawing that that drainage eventually goes back into the stormwater system. Is it that does. correct? Yeah, you have the open uh, wetland area, which is the rear portion of uh, 178 West Street, where you just have the dash lines. Uh, a lot of that's in a, a bordering vegetated wetland with a stream uh, going uh, through the center of it. Uh, and then when you take the corner as you enter the rear property of 22 Keith Road, it goes back into a 24 inch drainage system. Uh, and then it's for the most part drainage, drainage pipe for a few streets before you get into an open wetland area again. Does that 24 inch pipe, do you think that creates a constraint? <coughs> Which one? Exactly, the downstream one. The one at 22. It the, uh, at Keith Road? Uh, well, at 22 Keith Road, right? At 22? Yeah. Um, I don't believe so. <coughs> I mean, it's not a very large drainage area. It's um, picking up. What's the next street over from Howard? Um, Lewis. Well, which side? Towards uh, Warburton. Lewis, right? Lewis. Yeah. So I mean, it's uh, it's picking up the drainage from Howard Street up to County, um, and um, the. Just uh, Scotland and Oakland on the. On the uh, side. No, it, it basically takes uh, the. From uh, Lewis in the backyards in there, it doesn't go over uh, to the other. It, and it was up by Oak. It was up by Oak Street or Scotland on, uh, on the right hand. Side. You have some of the drainage on West Street from yeah. County to about Oak that comes this way, yeah. and then after you get beyond Oak, it goes down Oak Street. <coughs> it's got something crazy going on across the street. That's that's the there's a that's the connection. There's, that's the connection that um, it's actually a private drain. Uh, that runs in about 100 feet, if that, 18-inch uh, pipe. Uh, then it goes into that open area, and then it just uh, back uh, the natural backyard drainage between Howard and uh, Lewis. I, I would be interested to hear from the um, neighbors because when I looked at looked at that upper portion of the channel, it didn't look like it was it came out of the bank, but hard to tell. That the water overtopped the bank in the upper part. I I would I would assume it's probably overtopping at the rear. At the rear. That's where it gets shallow. I mean, it's um, you know, and I say it's ideally it should be dredged down more, but I'm not going to cut every single tree down in its own possible way. I mean, if you if you held a straight grade from the 24 inch at uh, Keith Road uh, in the discharge of Howard Street. The stream's a foot high. 
But yeah. you have the wetland in between too, so for that that entirely would have to be dredged too. And, yeah. and that's remaining intact. Mm -hmm. So I mean there's a couple of little if you take the between a twenty four inch pipe that's in the rear of eighty seven, I mean one oh seven um, West Street, just beyond the spillway from that invert to the natural bed right at the edge of Power Street. I won't say the inver of the pipe because the inver of the pipe is partly submerged. And there's just a couple of high spots from some treatments and everything. And it's, um, so you just it, it doesn't affect that much. Okay, so um, pulling out the partially collapsed sluice way is as far as you're going. You're going to leave the concrete pipe as is and uh, what are you going to do around the opening of that pipe is that is there going to be some sort of regrading around that opening or um i don't think it needs any okay yeah. uh, there's, there's, you have a little bit of earth channel between the sluice way and the okay. concrete pipe it will just blend into that uh, earth that earth uh, channel i wasn't sure if the sluice way went right up to the pipe no i believe there was a there's a space between yeah there. just five, there is a space. five foot space in between okay. well i'm not sure that not much, but okay. there's a little bit. There's a space between, uh, and uh, I'm Ron Petra, and I live at 119 Howard, which is, I'm on the left side, left side of, of okay. the, of the uh, okay. I guess, channel and the trams, uh, where it runs. Uh, the, uh, what George has described, uh, where those uh, concrete walls Tipping in. Yeah, I can you see. Pull those out. If you make it like the rest of it, you're going to have to dig out quite a bit on on, on either side to to have the same flow. And I know that that <coughs> concrete uh, pipe that's in there is apparently not level because it, it it flows through there to a certain extent, and then you know the sediment catches on the inside and on the back side. Uh, which doesn't help. Um, yeah, the other thing that uh, that you said, George, that kind of bothers me is that a lot of the rocks that are in the bottom are from the are from the sides, and that's correct. Um, some of them are rather large, uh, and you know, I, I don't I don't know that they're going to be able to be lifted by I individuals. It seems like you have to you're going to have to use some kind of machine. To pick some of them out, and when you do, you're going to have a very uneven uh, um, uh, stream bed, which to me is leads you to where you are right now because you've got gullies in it where it washes out, and then water kind of sits there, and when it, you know starts to dry up, and ideally all that would just flow because it's graded properly. So when you say that you know you aren't going to, I think you said you aren't going to grade it, you know you're going to have problems other times of the year. And I thought there was um, someone had mentioned to me that um, the mass mosquito Middles, there, Middlesex mosquito Middlesex yeah there uh, there was some concern uh, about you know and I don't know if it's near a Keith Road. It's the wetlands area. They were, they were there. I had contacted them to clean up this portion. Okay. Um, there was something that we actually at one time hoped that they would get done this winter, but they hadn't been able to get to it. Um, and that's, uh, they, their typical work is in the winter months uh, during the summer. When you think they get some of the construction done, they're too busy with mosquitoes. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, hope possibly that, uh, you know, next fall they may be coming before the commission to uh, uh, to indicate what type of work they're going to be doing and everything. It just needs some minor cleaning. It's it's not really a lot. No. In in terms of removing the rocks, the rocks are going to get pulled out with heavy construction they're gonna, they're equipment. Gonna get, they're going to put put, get put back in the bank. Put back in the bank, and then Where the earth channel will be left alone. Left alone, or are you planning on doing any? Smoothing or grading or anything nope. in there? No smoothing or grading. Not going to regrade the channel. We'll leave it uh, natural. Right now, what you have is you just have a bunch of stones that are in there that are causing uh, dams with down leaves, branches, and everything right. else. Uh, the only other, uh, there's two large trees, one just before the uh, 
spillway and yeah. one approximately halfway down uh, that the roots are going right across the yeah. bottom of the stream. Yeah. The stream bed, in the stream bed, there's roots exposed in the stream bed, right. significant roots. So it does dry out. And it's the, oh yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. the and, so it, it's and it's the two largest trees that were there that yeah. are there. Yeah. And I think one's about a 15 inch, and the other one maybe a 24 chuck. It, yeah. It a good, they were good size. It, it seemed like the only without getting into a really major project that included taking down those trees, you could just do what you suggested, which is pick up the largest yeah. uh, obstacles. You know, and there's debris there. You know, there's pieces of uh, clay pipe uh, and whatnot, and you know, it's just a general cleaning. And but the biggest part is to remove all the little stones that are causing all the issues, uh, impeding the flow going down to the main part of the channel. Yeah, I understood that there was a, that there was a problem on the other side of Howard's Pat not the other side of West Street, the other side of of, um, of Howard Street, uh, where there's um, there was a culvert put, uh, uh, put in and, and soil was put on top of the culvert. The, the portion, I, what I think you're talking about <coughs> is from this side of Howard Street up to probably well, I, 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 80 feet or something. There was a uh, drain line that was installed by the residents at some point in time. Uh, it's a 15 or an 80, 18 inch pipe, I figure out uh, what. Uh, it runs for about 100 feet and then it just goes into a natural uh, depression that drains all the properties in the back. But I understood that, that, that they, the people came to look at it, they couldn't actually clean up, clean out that portion because it was too, it was too long, is that, is that? No. I'm not, I, I don't know, there's nothing out there that's too long to clean, so I don't know what, what you're really referring to. Referring to the area that was filled in mm -hmm. a few years ago. The culvert was put in there. It's, it's probably, um, say, I'm 19, probably 118, uh, across the street. Across the street, yeah, it's about 90 feet long. Yeah. yeah. So how do you clean it up? We don't clean it up because it's a private drain. It's up to the property owner to clean it out. We could clean it out in about 15 seconds, 15 minutes. There's equipment and there's gear that can be used to yeah. clean out and scrub out drains. Yeah. Um, but if but it's, it's a private but if it's, drain. If it's but it's if it's private, private drain, if we it's don't own it, so we can't clean it. I have a question. I, I live yeah. Alex Urso, 146 West. George, you've been in my house. Who owns the drain, George? It's a private drain. I couldn't yeah. tell you who yeah. installed it. So it's owned by no, the I property. Who installed it? Who owns it? It's owned by the property owner, so wherever it lies. So can we what? identify who that property owner is? Hmm? Can we identify who that property owner is? Who's who owns that drain? Who's ever the property owner that it's on? Right. Can we identify? You yes. certainly can. It's on the tax maps. Yeah. Okay. Can can somebody tell me or tell me where to go to, to find out exactly who owns it? You'd have yeah. to hire a um, surveyor to determine where your property lines are and where that pipe is in relation to it. I mean, browsing. We have plans in the office that may indicate it. How accurate the plans are, I don't know. But you know, I'll, we're not going to go do and, and do a survey and determine a property line to find out who owns a private drain. I can't do that. What makes it a private drain, George? I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to. Because it wasn't installed by the town, and there's no easement there. It was not. Just like this drainage area here. There's no easement. With just the, the just the, just like this area here. This was just a natural drainage channel, and all the components in there were private until the town took an easement over it. Right. We signed an easement. That's right. Yes. Then it becomes but town property. But if you can identify the address oh, yeah. uh, of the property where that pipe is, you can go to the assessor's office or look at the town maps yeah, and you find out who owns that address. Do you want to get into that? that? Address. I can call this up. And I think that some of that info is online. Yeah. I think the only part you that's... You can't tell online. You can't tell exactly where the pipe is. Right, the right. That's, right. That's, so that's right. exactly. Problem. I can that's tell exactly. you who owned the property previously and how it was put in, all right? Uh, what surprised me to hear uh, yeah, that that you know, the town doesn't have responsibility for it because it was put in by 
the individual. There, there are many drains in the town that were put in by private property owners, by, by developers, um, that we don't have easements to. And if we don't have an easement to, we have no legal means of going. All you have to do, though, George, is do what you, what you did Excuse in my me, case. Ma Madam you, Chairman, you, you, you asked this, to this, find an easement, this isn't and part of the application. We've I got a big stack of, I, I understand. of hearings. Um, there, are, there are ways to find out. Um, that's it's not our purview. If you'd like to take that up with town other town offices, you know, you're free to do that. Um, are, there, are there any other questions about this particular project Sorry. at this point? Right there. Um, hearing none. Any other questions or comments from commission I, members? I have one other question. Um, is there going to be any is it anticipated that when the West Street project is done, uh, is the, this is the, the, the paving project you're talking right, about, that there will be any increased water flow that will come down Howard Street versus what it is right now? No. Yes. no. No. Through. Not according to the designs we approved. No. We're not we're not increasing the drainage area of the uh, what is on West Street itself. So there's no there's no more runoff coming down. We're not with there. We're not in a sense. We're not changing the amount of pervious area of that area either. Are we putting in some storm scepter type things in that stretch? Of there's West Street? Uh, one going on Oak Street, I believe. Uh, there might be a couple going up at that area. I'd have to look a plan to find out. And Oak Street's not going to help this. They did. They no, did have it's, a, it's a number the of BNPs. It's on the other. Yeah. They do have a number of. B I don't know if it's oh, affects this. But area. I thought, I thought it was. Right I thought it was here. spread yeah. out. No. Yeah. No kidding. It is. Across. Across. Right right there. Some catch there's, there's this section. So just so you know, across. So that project starts at. Town line, town line near the mobile town station line. and it goes and it goes to Willow Street okay so mm -hmm. along that enormous stretch there are a couple of places where there will be a little bit of increased infiltration and that should in, across the whole stretch improve or lessen the runoff I don't know about infiltration but removal of suspended solids yeah. removal of suspended solids but but I think those storm scepters also Oh, no, they don't have an infiltration capacity. No. Sorry. Unless they're Sorry. broken, so, then they would. No, so well, it will do a little bit of water treatment. What's going on the project is uh, infiltrating basins. Catch oh, basins. they are? Okay. Yes. There's, I, think we're, I think we were able to squeeze a half a dozen or maybe yeah. a little bit more. Along the so, so there will be a, some slight improvement. Yeah, but and it's, I it's wanna, so. Yeah. Yeah, which means. So minor. Yeah. So it's, but essentially, it's the same flow. Okay. So at this point, is there a motion regarding this notice of intent? It's been open tonight, so I'll entertain I'll a motion. I'm going to stall back, but well, hey, it seems like hey, it's two several things. It's up to me. Are, are there any open questions? I would say one open question is what I just asked, access. If it's going down the stream bed, how many trees? Are we taking out the fence? Are you taking out the We're not taking trees? any trees out to gain access. We will be going down someone's property. If we have to take a fence down to gain access, we will take a fence down and restore it. All right. If we have to reseed or re resod someone's yard, that's what we will do. The best spot is so back there. So if well, we I was going to go down right here, but you just put up a new fence. How about right here? Yes. <laughs> Why not right there? <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. then just. Why not right here? Through this guy's yard. Yeah, I know. Because it's right there. I mean, I think the access is something that is not necessarily. Something we're not going we to cut, we're not gonna cut any trees down to gain it. Get weigh it in on. I mean, we're all about the design and how it's going to be done. Unless, of course, it Unless it's he wants to cut trees down to get in. Right. No, I'm not cutting uh, any trees down. Okay. Well, I. Um, I move that we approve this notice of intent and issue an order of conditions and the order of conditions specify that without coming back to this board, no trees be taken down. Yeah, that's fine. Any, uh, any other conditions? Do you want to look at the stream bed since I know that you've done pebble counts before? I don't think I need to. I think it's clear I've that the sluice way has to come out anyway. You've yeah. seen it enough the past month, and just the past few months. <laughs> Through MWRA. All the pebbles are gone now. They're, yeah. they're, with, yeah. they're with MWRA. I think. I think. Yeah, if you got in the way of that pipe, you were gone. <laughs> I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, you had been. 
just like Augustus Blue Plum. Okay, so I second okay. Uh, Jamie's motion. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? None? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Chuck, do you think you can have the order of conditions prepared or should we continue the hearing? No, no, don't have no doubt okay. about it. I'll have then it. Then I move we close the hearing. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Okay. So we've closed the hearing. Um, we'll draft the order of conditions and get that signed hopefully at the next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming out. Do you need me for anything else on the agenda? Is there anything else on the... I don't think so. You're not here, for, you're not going to represent 45 Causeway. That's no. RMLD. No. So, uh... No, they're on their own. No, I, <laughs> no, I think that's, I think that's it. I go home and Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, then, let's, uh open the notice of intent uh, so at this point we're going to open the notice the public hearing for a notice of intent 270-0644 241 Pearl Street map 34 lot 131 uh, Baker it's being opened and conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act Massachusetts General Laws chapter 131 section 40 as amended and the Reading General Bylaws section 7.1 uh, we will receive, the applicant will present the proposal, the commission will receive reports from its administrator, the commission will address questions and comments to the applicant, the public will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and our questions are presented. Um, and at this time, would the commission <coughs> please introduce themselves, starting with Chuck. Uh, Chuck Taroni, the conservation administrator. Ryan Sullivan, vice chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Jamie Moore. Rebecca Long. Julie Rogers. I'm Steve Baker. Hi, Mr. Baker. Welcome. Um, go just, ahead and. I do have these uh, certified mail receipts. I don't know if that's part of the. Thank it you. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, at the very tip corner of our block, which is the wetlands. Yep. Um, and yep. we're proposing on the. Uh, eastern side of our house, which is the back of the house. Uh, an, an addition there, um, the, there was a, a typo on our paperwork. It, it's, it's, it says 11 by 17. Uh, it's going to be about 11 by 15. It's just off two feet. Okay. Um, and then uh, with that addition, we're then going to continue south uh, and build a deck. That, that's the proposal. It's just going back and then to the, to the uh, south. So if, if I could just um, please, um, you said the corner touches the wetlands. In fact, it doesn't touch the wetlands; it just touches the buffer zone. Oh yeah, the buffer zone. And this this whole project is in the outer buffer zone. It's approximately seventy-five or more feet from the resource area. Sixty-seven. Um, 52 if you count the grading. Mm -hmm. And that is counted. Should be counted. How so many if you count the grading? Yeah, 52. 52. 52. Are those on this drawing? I'm missing yep, that. Yep, there's 90. a 93 contour 93. here. No, I mean those distances. Not the 52. I mean this 67. Well, how'd you get there. that 52? I bet he measured it from there to there. Okay. But, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. Anyway, the point being, why why isn't this an RDA being in the outer buffer zone? It's and it's, it's I, I did go ahead and take a look. Yeah. So we're typically on a foundation project within 50 feet disturbance is a notice of intent. But are and we 50 I'm not feet? sure I had a lot of conversation with Jack on this prior to it coming in because this is almost the exact project that was proposed back in 2003. A lot of Jack's work is the same, so he might have just reproduced that and sent it back to us. So there's so, there's so it was previously filed. Yeah, as a notice and that project event. wasn't done. No, so it's yeah. from the previous owner. And then the one difference here is we're not doing a foundation; we're just building footings. Yeah. Oh. So there. we're just we're just knocking out the deck and putting footings in. We're not doing. The and when I did go ahead and look, the area between the proposed action and the resource area. Totally vegetated. There's a fence there. Grass. Grass. Yeah. 
grass and as well as shrubs. And then on the other side of the fence, there's a lot of natural vegetation. I, I could certainly support a negative determination for an RDA if we don't want to um, go back and refile. Then uh, I think certainly don't have any problem with the conditions because this, uh, particularly since it's on footings, it's. Well, since we're here with a yeah. notice of intent, we should probably rule on notice of intent. Right, right, right. But I think in, in the future, if we're in the outer buffer zone and there's total, uh, there's a fence and vegetation between the resource area and the, the action, I think, unless there's something uh, exceptional, an RDA would be appropriate. So the, the only difference between an RDA and a notice of intent is you lose all control, This, you know, because you're essentially saying that right there it's not causing any and we right. don't need a notice of intent but I, I, I understand that but the, just the fact they have that wooden fence there I mean no, I nobody's think, gonna get close to the resource area I, I think the two that you've mentioned and I know that you've mentioned two of them um, I think Jack just sent them in okay yeah so so at this point you've got a proposed addition 11 by 15 on footings um, and the deck will be on footings, so there's really not going to be any substantial amount of excavation there. It's actually all being hand done, too. We're not gonna it is. Yeah, it we're is. Not gonna it okay. Like and the grading will just be added fill, or just what, what fill we remove and do not use will go back under where the proposed yep. addition is so super minimal. Yep. So, but I mean, the new the grading the contour, the 63. That six, sorry, the 93 contour mm -hmm. there. You're also proposing some additional. No, that I think that 93 was Jack's recommendation of the hay bales or something like that. Is that what well, called? this this line, I don't know if sorry, you're, you're, you, yeah. go ahead and come up. Um, this line here is the hay bale line. Oh, right, right. Okay, here's your addition with, you said it was 15. And then this is sort of an additional contour. Like, in other words, this is the existing elevation, mm -hmm. and this is after the project. Maybe I don't know if you intended to have a flatter backyard oh, after no, no. No, it, this a, area like here. A nice little hill that goes, I mean, yeah. that goes Where the down. proposed addition is is the only area we'll be adding any of the yeah. fill. That we any of the fill. So, yeah. you, so you're no not proposing yeah, to, to regrade yeah, or add some awesome. additional. I mean, that, yeah. that yard, <laughs> yeah. that yard okay. looks beautiful. I don't know oh, why you. you'd want to regrade it. Yeah, no, I wouldn't okay. know. I, I, okay, don't so even, I don't even think the hay bales are necessary myself. I think you might end up killing more grass and vegetation with the hay bales than anything you protect. Yeah. I mean, I prefer well, I, not because I, I just put all these evergreens yeah. in there. Right. And, right. I, I, I Honestly, with minimal amount of hand digging and existing wooden fence. Suggested we take the requirement for the hay bales out and silt sets. Any objections? No, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. I don't either. Okay, sure. oh. We have our word that, especially myself as the owner of the company, will chase any debris. I don't care if we're near where yeah. it is or not. Yeah. Um, any questions from conservation members? No? Chuck? No? No. Any questions from the public about this project? No? It seems, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, um, so, is there a motion? I move we issue order of conditions. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Chuck, do you need more time or can we? I actually have you? this one um, done. Ready? But I didn't send it to the commission or the applicants, so we could hold off on it. Okay, it's let's. I, I move we close the public, public hearing. hearing. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Public and we'll, we should have the signed uh, order in eight so, weeks. So we'll, we'll sign yeah, it at the next approved. one. We just, we'll have, just haven't send. read it yet. <laughs> so we'll get the copy in the next packet. We'll read it, and we'll sign it at the next meeting. And okay. you and Jack will have a chance to look at it um, also in heaven, and we'll address any questions. But we'll take off that email. If, if you don't have any questions about the, the official final permit draft, you don't have to show at the next meeting if you don't want we'll just oh, okay. we're just going to go so for it one thing yeah. chuck we okay. should do when we refer to this application and this drawing in the order of conditions specify that that changed grading is um not part of the proposed plan is not part of the approved plan yeah 
and and also the different yeah, deck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, if there's a typo on these plans, and Jack can reissue this with that corrected and take out that 93 line, that and take out the uh, hay bale line, that would make it a cleaner application. Then we have a drawing of what's actually been approved. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome to stay if you want. Um, You're welcome to join the commission if you'd like. Join the commission if you want, right. All right. Okay. Let's get to the notice of intent. Okay. It's the, the public hearing for notice of intent DEP number 270-0642, um, 629 Pearl Street, map 50, 52, lot 50, Morelli. Um, is now being opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 131 Section 40 is amended and the Reading General Bylaws Section 7.1. Uh, the applicant will present their proposal. The Commission will receive reports from its administrator. The Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will be given an opportunity <coughs> to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the Chair. Um, for those who haven't yet, please sign in. There's an attendance sheet at the door. Please uh, sign in and let us know you are here. Um, and at this point, we will introduce ourselves, starting with Julie. Rebecca Longman. Jamie Mon. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Ryan Solomon, Vice Chair. Chuck Troni, Conservation Administrator. Okay. Is there a Michael Morelli here? Welcome. Um, please uh, just introduce your project, please. Um, 629 Pearl Street. Um, we propose to tear down the existing house and uh, build new. Um, we would, uh, would also like to grade an area in the backyard on the left hand side of the house. Um, and on the uh, left hand left or the right hand? Isn't that on the right-hand side of the wall? Am I going to the, the, uh, the lot? My plan has the garage on, on the, the page right. Yes. Is and that directly behind that is a higher elevation? Right. On the left of that is the lower elevation around 92. Um, I'd like to grade grade that lower elevation flat. Um, meaning. Fill it. Okay. Yeah. Up to right, right, right. Um, Hay bales around the perimeter in the back with silk fence, and then whatever rocks come out of the uh, the, the uh, excavation, we'll be using them along the left side to bring the grade up. So you're going to bring the left or west side of the backyard up to approximately the same elevation as the right or east side of the backyard? No, no. It would only become the elevation on the left side would only come up to that retaining wall behind the wall behind the garage. So the, the base right side weight is extremely high. We won't right. Be able to bring it up that high. You're not going to bring it up that no, high. It would be two two elevations. The right side would be around uh, 96, 98, and the left side of the backyard would be around 92. Maximum fill of four feet. Yep. Yep. Okay. It would gradually slope as you get further away from the house. Gradual slope. Okay. And so that retaining wall would be three or four feet high. Yes. Okay. Um, Jamie, did you do a site visit? I did a site visit. Okay. And there are three things that I noted. One that. I, I wasn't clear on how that grading was going to be, but it looks like where you've proposed your retaining wall needs a retaining wall, that that steep slope is eroding and causing a mess. So I think that retaining wall is a good idea. Um, the other thing I noted is in the um, driveway, there's a drain. Do you know where that drain goes? I have opened that. 
just keeps filling. I think over the years it's just filled with dirt, and I think it just goes straight down. Is that, is that the one labeled leaching catch basin on the plan underneath the proposed garage? Mm -hmm. It's hard to read yeah. with the double writing on top of it. Yeah, that's where it is. Yes, yeah. right, right, right. So how are you going to put in a new drain in, in your uh, new driveway? Um, I wasn't planning on putting a new drain in. Because that will be low, won't it? Won't work yeah, we like that? Yeah, we bring that grade up for the front because uh, it is low right now. So you're going to bring it up? Yeah, I think we're going to have to bring it up a little bit. 99.50. Going up to 99.50 in front of the garage. Where do you see that, Brian? You guys spot, that. It's a spot grade 99X550 right in front of the garage. It's oh, proposed. Okay. I see it. I see and then it's proposed. At the, then at the, row, at the front lot line, it's 98.67. So, um, Jamie, is your question about just drainage in front of the house? Because that's outside of the 100 foot. Well, right, but if they put a drain in the driveway and then it drains to the resource area. Right, that's what right. I was curious right. about. It's likely he doesn't, he doesn't need it because now that since yeah, that's filled, it's not functioning. So. And yeah, then I don't the, think we need to, I don't think we would plan on putting a new drain on that. Okay. But, and then the, uh, the third and final thing I noted was. Um, No, I have one more after this, but the Go third ahead. and next to final <laughs> thing I know, there's a tree in the western corner of the, uh, excuse me, the eastern corner of the site, the right-hand side, and that oh, says tree to be removed. Why is that? I'd like to remove that tree because it's uh, just the location of it. I, it's going to be over the garage. Okay. I, I, okay, I think it is. It's a. Uh, I think it's a hemlock or a spruce. Um, yes. And and I think that it uh, some more plantings along there that removal of that tree would make sense. And then the um, the final point I have is one that I say at least once every week. Um, there are a lot of healthy, mature trees on the um, north and east. Uh, east side of that lot and we want to make sure that those trees stay there and that by building a new house we don't come back and ask for all those trees to be cut down to protect the house. The north east. The back the of, the of the lot. triangle. Oh, the back. Oh, the, the back, back those firs? Yeah. Oh, I like those. Yeah. yeah, we want to make sure not only you but subsequent owners of the property. Is that the existing tree line right the, here? The canopy in the back, yeah. Yes. We've had, we've had so much is there where tree people put garages and built houses and then two like years later come back and say, yeah, there are more trees, trees are going to endanger our oh. house. This oh. side, so we, we too. prevent that from happening. Why doesn't that? They're not doing that. But okay. if we if we if we we just want to make sure that subsequent owners don't cut those trees down because uh, um, their house is too close to them, um, because we've moved the house back. That's that's the only thing. But I think it's. A good plan, and this should be a uh, a nice new uh, structure on their property. Yeah. Thank you. It, um, I mean, it looks to me just an observation that the nearest grading is at least 50 feet from the wetland. Yeah. So um, I have no issues. I have I have no issues with that. I I I totally support the if if that hemlock is getting removed in the eastern side, um, as highlighted. You know, so replacing that with some in-kind plantings or um, native, some some. It could be bushes or low trees that won't yep. uh, that won't threaten your your house, but just have some vegetation over there would be nice. Yeah, okay. yeah, um, yeah. And uh, I assume, other than that, you do not anticipate cutting down any trees. I guess, I guess one other question I have, and it's kind of, it's a little bit, it's really close to the, what I think is the 100 foot buffer zone is, is perhaps where that proposed 92 foot contour meets the hay bale line and the property line right there to the west. You know, um, just something's, I mean, like Brian said, that's a four foot, um, four foot fill area right there and he and said he'd slope it though right 
Yeah, it's, it's not like going to be 92 gonna feet at the it's property not, line. It's just, we're just going to take whatever rock draw there to fill up to that property line and then just... Just grade, grade it in grade to the, to the property the line. And, okay. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, yeah. when contour lines meet each other like this, it's not pretty. Oh, no. <laughs> from a, no. from a real world. Flatten it out a little yeah. more. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from commission members? Comments, concerns, Chuck? Uh, it's just, you said be nice to see some planting and all that. Do you um, want to leave it very general like that? Or would you like to see a plan or some species, uh, what they're going to plant and locations? If, if I could ask the applicant, when do you anticipate starting construction? We'd like to start middle of June. Uh, but we know July's up to go, so maybe July. I mean, I'd be happy with an order of conditions stating that a planning plan had to be submitted and approved by the commission prior to um, prior to issuing a um, or prior to construction. I wouldn't hold up the order of conditions for a planning plan. Yeah. You can always approve it. Yeah. After the fact. Prior to construction or a uh, certificate of compliance. Does it? Sit? Uh, doesn't matter to me. I mean, we I would say certificate because that's probably when they're going to stop planting, anyways. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, if I'm if you want to avoid if you want to avoid that whole step, you could. I mean, we could probably hash out something very simple now that just gets added to the order of conditions. Well, they can what, get it to us before we the sign plant the order of conditions next week. Yeah. So, you know, some just a, a couple. You could work that out um, with Chuck of because he has a list of native plants. Um, you know, and just say I'm going to plant. You know, two to three yeah, we're shrubs for two in or three. Either shrubs or low trees. They're changing their whole entire backyard. They're right. going to see it and visualize where the plant is. I don't know. This is what I'm assuming. Maybe towards the end of the project, they could really get a taste of where it yeah, should Well, go that might be that. easier for them to do. Yeah. Okay. That gives you a little bit of flexibility. But we'll, we'll put in, you know, a cert, like two, three. Yeah. Native shrubs or trees, or a combination of the two. Uh, at this point, yes, this is a question from the public. Yes, um, I believe you said that you were going to bring the the grading up to the level of the retaining wall, to be 94 <coughs> feet. And I think if you actually brought it, and you said 92, but you also said 90, the level of the retaining wall is 94. I think if you bring that up to 94, Slope of the land will then drain your yard uh, fertilizers, you know, weed killing different into the basin. So we well, think you'd need a little more detail on that. Can, can, just for the sake of the record, can you just state I'm your sorry. name and address? Uh, <coughs> James Cole, 607 Pearl Street. Okay, thanks. And your concern was basically that runoff would. Runoff from the yard, if that, if that grading comes up to 94 feet. Actually goes. I think it's going to go the other way. It grades down, up, and then back down to the base. It can't go So the that actually is nine. It goes starts at 92, 94, 96. And on the other side, it goes back down to the basin. So it would drain away from it. There's no way it can get to the basin. The um, if if the uh, just for the sake of I know a lot of people. Some people have plans and some people don't. So this is the property, the proposed. Ground elevations when he's done yep. are are high here, high and a little bit lower here by two feet, a little bit lower here by two feet, are and then that, and then uh, another two foot drop from that contour to so this these, area. These, these solid lines are your proposed lines, and the and the dotted lines are the existing lines. Right. Yes. Right. So on that line. side, it's actually pretty close to what what it is what now. It is now. But so that changed too much. That retaining wall is only. Because it's, it's such a dramatic. It's so dramatic at, at the moment. If if you imagine that surface water is flowing, the surface water will flow perpendicular to those lines, as you probably know, and it'll go this way, that way, this way into his backyard. And this is a pretty large area for that runoff to pond, to infiltrate, to 
stagnate. So, um, you know, if, if there's a huge storm and frozen ground, there is going to be water washing this way. But then it gets to here and it's going to come off of that and go like, this way. It looks to me like the existing um, drainage goes more or less parallel to Pearl Street. And the, the new drainage will, will go more to the back of the block. I think I think it, it I think if if you look at the if you look up close you can see that it it's got a tortuous path um, and that in general as you as you step back they're both kind of going in the same general northwest yeah. direction well one I mean the dotted lines go northwest more, more parallel to Pearl Street and the new lines go more toward the back of the lot toward the That's true, but on a macro scale, when you zoom out beyond the lot, there's no way that, you know, it stays going in the same direction. Um, That's the purpose of those rocks along the side, so it would actually stay flat. Yeah, just, you know, just the concern that I've got is, is that, you know, to make sure there's some condition that goes into this, to make sure that that drainage will be done in a way that you don't end up getting more yard materials into the existing detention base. More, you know, which which detention basin are you referring to? Help me out, Brian. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. I think the proposed grading on the plan um, will actually slow down the runoff. It just takes it in a different direction. Okay. The runoff right now goes into the neighbor's lot, and the proposed runoff Go partially into the but the, the final destination is the same. The final destination is the same. By the time it gets to the bottom of the hill, it's the same location. Uh, a condition for a slow release fertilizer. Did, that's all that. Do, does anybody Do know the else? history of that detention basin? Was that part of the part uh, of the it's development? Built when it they <laughs> built that cul de sac on Partridge. I think there's an easement yes, on it partridge. somewhere in that area. Well, I mean, um, one of the purposes of the detention basin is to hold that water and give the fertilizers and whatnot uh, a chance to naturally degrade and keep them out of the out of the uh, surface water. So if more drainage went to that went to that detention basin, that'd be a good thing. I don't think it will, but if it did, it certainly would. It would be an advantage, not a disadvantage. If more fertilizers went to the detention basin. Yeah, because you have plants in the detention basin to take up fertilizers. There's a well, there's, there. there's one argument. Yes, please, for the uh, sake of the record, introduce I'm yourself. Nancy Cole, um, his wife, and we live in 607 Cole Street. Okay. And we're thrilled the new house. I just really, really like thermal pools, and on back over. In that area, and we actually have a recording. If you wanted to hear it from last year of the frogs in the vernal pool, we also have a picture of one of the frogs with a fairy shrimp on his head. I don't know, you may know frogs eat fairy Double shrimp. whammy. It's an amazing <laughs> photo. And our biggest concern is that if the drainage somehow goes down there, and then can, it, can you all, you're certain it won't get to the vernal pools, but once they're gone, they're gone for life. Yes, you're, yeah, you're correct. I don't. That's my big concern. That's yep. I wasn't and aware of I appreciate of your concern. Pool. Is check is are you? I checked it. it. I went on Mass Oliver. There, it hasn't been updated. The one on Galvin Circle hasn't been moved yet. But I also checked our paper records and didn't yep. find anything in this area that was close. The closest one was up by Bear Meadow, kind of in that. Um, check Mass GIS. Yes. <laughs> even, even, yeah, well, even on a where, potential Where pool. is yeah. this yeah. vernal pool you're this, referring this, to? This is, you know, I, I it, 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 we take the path back to the, the bare meadows and all, all mm -hmm. back in yep. there. Yep. And there's, there's one along one of the paths back there that we, we stood there, as I told Chuck, for 20 minutes, pretended to be trees so they would start poking again. And then on down further where we got the photo, I don't know the topography of all those hills in there. So when I saw the moving of the bulk
boulders and the cutting of trees and stuff, I became concerned well, outside of 100 that feet. somehow 400 feet from where man it was might put our seed, grass seeds and fertilizers and things like that, they could get in there. But if you all think the topography is such that's not going to happen, that's my, that's my only concern, not the house. But we're talking a couple, at least a couple hundred feet. Is Chuck said 400 feet. Well, yeah. I mean, 400 feet. Jim Cole again. The, I think there's a there's a difference between um, documented vernal pools and you know, an actual um, habitats for frogs. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I think that somebody ought to at least go see well, if there's any frogs living back there. Slow release. You know, <laughs> it's really salamanders. The, um, you know, according to our town bylaws, um, you know, I appreciate your concern for the vernal pools. It's something we are sensitive to um, and we are concerned about. But the, the distance, the distance uh, that even, you know, some standard fertilizer has and, and the amount of time and the amount of um, the time and the distance between where it would be applied to where it's going to is pretty big um, if, if it ever gets there at all. Now we can stipulate in our order of conditions the distance, right. So, so as I showed before, so here's the area you're talking about and, and the grades are going this way. The slope is going downhill this way, which is kind of not even towards it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could say, well, if I'm standing here, it goes that way. Well, yes, but that's not where the grading's happening, and that's not where the lawn's going to be. Like, the tree line is here. And it's off their lot, too. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's off their lot. So really, it's really, it kind of doesn't make sense that this will go directly that way, unless somebody builds a massive canal from here to there. Um, you know, it just kind of, just doesn't it doesn't prove out the, technically but the slope is toward the the proposed slope is toward the existing pension base and you're saying that it it's not the slope. it's not it's not, not actually it's not this is exactly what i'm saying there's a high here there's a low here and when you Where connect the the, the low is here so when you when you go from high to low you're going north and so here's the detention basin and that's it's like and there's a ridge between it and there's and there's a ridge here exactly and there's a ridge there between it so so it's really not even okay so 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 I appreciate your concern yeah so so at this point are there any more questions from the public no Hearing none. Any questions or comments from commission members? No. Nope. Uh, is there a motion on this? Wait, did, did we already? Did you already close this? And no. no. Okay. No. Um, you, I, I assume move. you don't have this. Okay, do you? No. I'm, you didn't want to look at the other one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but, okay. So okay. you should close it. No, no. I, I think I can get this one done too. I, I think we have enough information to prepare an order of conditions. Um, yeah, this is, is, there, is there a motion to close the hearing? Should be pretty easy. So moved. Okay, seconded. All those in favor? Okay. Motion to order an issue, issue an order, order of conditions. conditions. As amended. As amended? Well, how did we amend it? You didn't want trees, any Right, right. Right. Trees cut. Are we talking yep. about slow release fertilizer? I know. No one brought that up. I don't think it's necessary right. at this point. And that was brought up. Impossible yep. to police. Yeah. So I have true. the trees. I have a planting plan. Yeah. Yep. Planting plan. Three, I think two that to three was trees. During when you issue a, or when it's close to a certificate of compliance, right? Right. Right. Okay. Right. And I have the standard no cutting in the 25 foot zone which is another reason no why. it's not the 25 foot zone it's, it's no healthy trees between the resource area and the structure so, well I just I just added it to one and that I think we'll just look at it again because I grabbed it uh, found it after the last meeting and said something about four inch trees at the 25 foot 
and the thirty and the additional ten foot. It was awarded like that. Well, we we wanted to say no healthy trees within the buffer zone between the resource area and the structure. That's what we wanted to say. I just wrote that down, so we'll I'll check it when. And the four inch is fine. That's that makes sense, but. So what, what we're between worried, anyone's house and and the resource, no healthy trees can be cut down. That's correct. We'll that write are. it. We'll we'll hash it out at the yeah, next I, meeting. That's, Let's that, that's totally the different than what we've been doing. That's completely well, different. It, it, the intent was because Sorry. people wanted to cut down trees in the buffer zone because they were too close to their house. After we gave them a permit to build the house, they right. didn't allow any cutting of trees. And that's that's correct, except for the fact that when they got a permit that was closer than usual to the 35 foot st no structure zone then they came back and said can we cut this tree down and we were kind of perplexed at that quest because they were close in the first place and now they're asking for the trees to be removed since the structure is so close uh, that's, i think we Let's arrived at it that way but um whatever we'll see, we'll see what, what, what it looks like to the next order okay um Okay, moving on. Moving right uh, on. I don't think we. we, we is there a motion, motion to, to vote on the order of conditions? So. Okay, so okay. moved. Second. Thank you. Seconded. All those in favor? Right. Okay, opposed? Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank Have a good night. Much. All right. Um, okay. Another notice of intent. Notice of in I'm going to open the public hearing for notice of intent DEP. Number 270-0643, uh, Main Street, or Zero Main Street, map 51, lot 95, Ahern is being opened and conducted under the authority of the Massachusetts <laughs> Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. The applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator. The Commission will address questions to the applicant. The public will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the Chair. Please sign in at the attendance sheet at the front door. And it's time for us to introduce ourselves, starting with Chuck. Chuck Troni, Conservation Administrator. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Jamie Mullen. Becca Wanley. Okay, thank you. We have uh, Robert Ahern. Well, my name is Stephen Erickson from North Environmental Services. Yes, okay. The plan. Welcome. Uh, the plan up here, the plan you have, shows the wetland boundary in green over in this area, the 25 foot in the light brown color, the 35 foot no structure in the slightly darker brown color, and the bordering vegetated uh, buffer zone in yellow. The proposal is for a single family home that will be serviced by sewer and water. We would be placing erosion controls that are shown in the kind of orange brown color, uh, building a retaining wall along that edge, and installing a 26 by 36 foot house in that area with the driveway coming out onto Main Street. Okay. So the limit of construction is at the uh, 25 foot, just before the 25 foot where that retaining wall would be. Okay. Okay. Um, Jamie, did you do a site visit on this one? I did a site visit. Okay. Please um, enlighten us. It's an interesting site. It's um, totally vegetated, largely with mature trees, uh, mainly white pines. No existing structures? No existing structures. Okay. <laughs> they are two or three items to note. Um, <laughs> one is that, um, and I might ask the uh, representative, what, when was it, when were the wetland flags put in place? The end of March. Oh, they were put in the end of March. Yes. Um, I did notice some ferns and... Snow on the ground, but not much. There was snow, okay. So, I did notice some vegetation, some uh, ferns, and some other facultative vegetation, vegetation that was uh, marginally upgradient of the flag. So I think we want to check those flags once the vegetation is added. Okay. 
All, all of them, or Mr. some Tyrone in particular? Verify the boundary. That'd be fine. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think we're talking much change, five feet, maybe something like that. Um, just because the line was placed with snow on the ground. So, um, yeah, not a problem. And the other question, or the uh, another observation was, I couldn't tell from the plans, um, there's uh, approximately eight foot change in grade between Main Street and this lot. It's almost a vertical really? six or eight foot drop yeah. right at the edge of Main Street. And I wasn't sure how that grading was going to be handled. Can you, uh, can you address that? That was the reason for the retaining wall? But to the driveway. Is this uh, going to be the driveway? Are you just going to go like that? Or? Yeah, the engineer didn't show a lot of grading in that area, but I can have him check that. <coughs> He's showing the grading, but it looks like it's coming up pretty light in the background. Yeah, it looks like it works. Well, he's, like he's, well, he's, this, he's adding this is, implies that the uh, Main Street is at 106. 106.8, yeah. right. 106.08. Yeah. And it, it, the first grade on the property looks like it's 106 also. 106.75, which is higher, which is what you want. You don't want to take all the drainage. Well, may, maybe I was on the wrong place because what I saw was a big drop coming off Main Street. I, I agree, there is a big drop there, but that so is the reason for the retaining wall. That's only about a foot of fill right there in the yes, front property line. Right yes, right at that location. May I speak, please? Um, just yeah. give your name and address, please. Um, my name is Karen Carr, and I'm at 1257 Main Street, which okay. abuts this um, okay. thing. There is probably a good, at this point in time, a good, um, I would say, five foot or so drop from the roadway down and from my property down on the retaining wall that is on that side. So in order for them to bring in that fill, they're gonna bring in more than a foot of fill. Yep, you yep. I that's really clear. say that you're gonna to have to walk the property to see the, the, the drops and how much yep. they're gonna to have to bring in. I, I can see that. We can, can see I can that. see that. Okay. At, at the driveway front lot line, it's one foot of fill. Mm -hmm. At the back of the lot, it's much more than one foot. That's yep. a fact. Well, what happens is basically from the road, from where they are at the road, to where um, he's going to, I don't know, I think it's going to be more than a foot of fill, but I, maybe I don't understand what a foot of fill is. Because um, <coughs> it's it's probably like up to here on the, <laughs> the difference. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a good difference. It's a drop, I mean, in, in actual height. Yeah, if you to, stand and, it, and they, they have to bring that property up to because it's flat where they're proposing the house but the roadway is considerably high yeah i stood on the um on that lot adjacent to main street and i was looking at the tires going by main street right right at my nose <laughs> yeah, this is showing about a six foot difference in height from the back of the lot to main street no we're talking right in the beginning of the lot it's it's right at the front where he has to put the driveway I'll have the engineer darken these topo lines so that they're easier to read. Did you do you know if Jack shot the the topo or he grabbed him off the town's GIS system? He shot an on the ground survey. He did. Yes. Because I could see with the GIS, you'd miss that because yeah. it's it's uh, no, he's, he's very kind of, rough. These you contours can't trust are too the GIS, unfortunately. These contours are too fine to be GIS. They're definitely definitely certain. I'll guarantee you. what it looks like on this. You know what? Could I just add to this? I'm just Tom introduce yourself. I live at 532 and I've and your name? the property. Tom Walsh, 532 Thank you. Pearl Street. So um, I've walked <coughs> the back, so I'm on the back end of the property where, yep. where the red line is, the yep. front corner there. And um, I'm very curious about this as well. So I've walked the property and to Karen's point, the drop off from Main Street is significant. It's six to six to seven feet. You know what I mean? It's significant drop off. So what that shows there and what, you know, when you go out and see it, it, it's 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 a big drop. This the is other, the other over six feet. What's yeah. that? This is showing. No, we're talking feet. right in the oh, beginning. We're not talking from feet. the back of the property to the, the yeah, front. Yeah, within we're four talking, four right feet horizontally, there's a the house, drop, an immediate out. drop. And the and the other point I, I just want to uh, reaffirm that you made as well is sort of the delineation. I, I've looked at delineation. I've taken pictures of it. There's a significant fern growth on the southerly side of the delineation line. So okay. 
distance. You know, mm -hmm. you said so five feet, you know what I mean? It could be 10 feet, it could be eight feet, 10 feet. So you need to check it. I think, you know, when you did the, the check in, in March, late March, I don't think there's a lot of vegetation there, and there is now. So we can walk here on this too. I mean, I'm not sure if you're edifying or you're waiting. Okay. Towns GIS. Okay. Thank you for your observations. Any other questions or comments from the public? Yeah. I also have another Two question, foot increments. and that is, is the retaining wall that is along my property line, um, there's a drop there as well. So at the beginning parts of it, um, in order, and there's a, a significant number of trees there, some of which I can tell will be on my property, some of which will not be on my property. But in order for them to put that retaining wall in, I'm presuming they have to be <coughs> on their side of the property. The water all falls, flows down. Well, if you go to the back of the station. property, I will guarantee you, if you stand there, you will be looking it's up through seven. my backyard it's because we have not no fill. You will look up from it's my one. hill. So it's, and actually, we're going to flow there. So I've been told it's a four foot retaining wall, but my concern is, is that the water will, on um, heavily rain days, which we do have, do have sometimes, the water then will start flowing down that retaining wall towards the back of the property and flood either um, the properties that are behind me or will redirect the water there. And I think that needs to be taken into consideration as well. Okay, thank you. Sir? Yeah, Richard Chase, I'm uh, Nelson Ave. I'm here with the four other Nelson Ave residents and a Main Street resident. Um, and we all want to uh, voice our concerns with the two. So if you want to take us in turn, I don't know, but you're standing, why don't you go ahead? Okay, I've got several concerns with it. Um, go ahead. We all get water in our basements as it is, and it is quite mushy out there now, although it hasn't rained in quite a while. It's very wet. So well, I'm concerned with the amount of weight that this house has and the amount of weight that we're retaining wall in the driveway. <laughs> what that's going to do with all the underwater streams, because that's going to divert stuff and change things, and my basement might really flood out permanently. So okay. I just think that's one of my, my major concerns. My, my second concern is the wildlife that live back there. So there's a lot of wildlife, okay? There's deer that are constantly in our backyards. We love to see them. We, we, you know, I, I know it's tragic when they get hit by cars, but I love to see the deer. There's owls back there, there's foxes, there's all kinds of wildlife. That I got pictures of all of it. We so. got them all. We got all the pictures too. Except it's, for the coyote that keeps coming up the, my yes. property line. And we don't mind him. We don't mind. He's, a, he's, he's, he's yeah. friendly he's too. All right. he's, he has a right to our property and our life. He was here first. So he 15 feet of me. <laughs> so that's one of our concerns. I, I, I'm very okay. sympathetic to this gentleman. And I just want to ask him, are you the owner of the property? No. No, I'm not. Okay, he's the no, owner here? Not at this point, okay. I don't think. Is it a wetland scientist and a soil scientist and a number of other things? So I'm just representing the plant. Great, okay. I just I, I had a question for the owner. I wanted to see if it was a, uh, a legacy property, it was handed down to him, you know? I, I, I don't know at this, at this point. I might have the information somewhere in front of me, but there's a lot on this plan, and I, know, I, I, I can't see it very clearly. That's fine. My point um, was that... that you know, if it was if it was handed down to him and he always wanted to build a lot on a uh, house on grandpa's lot, then who are we to stand in the way of that? You know what I mean? But if it's just a developer that just wants to put up a house and make money, I think there's a lot of families here that are gonna be affected by this. That's that's what he's looking to do. That's it. So I know. Okay. Well I, just to address just to address that, um, you know, your 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 feelings about whether you want a house there or don't want a house there, as significant as those are, are not under our jurisdiction. If they can meet the requirements, our performance standards, um, and legally put up a house, we have no right to say you cannot. Um, so we cannot decide whether a house goes there or not, because houses can be designed and built a number of effective ways that do allow for the preservation of wildlife, do allow for the good management of water and so that it so that you are not adversely affected as a matter of fact that's part of our job is to make sure the design and the construction happens so that there are not impacts to the surrounding basements and the and the, and the water table in general so just just to address that so you know you can voice that concern but that's not anything we have control over um, yes Catherine John Gregorio, 15 Rocky Road. Okay. Um, 
I'm probably one of the last to but is, but knowing directly across from this property, um, Henry Smith, who just passed away about a week or so ago, he would, had talked to me about the meeting and coming and whatever, but he had a heart attack. I'm sorry. Away. But um, my three neighbors, they all get water in their cellars every time. In fact, they're still pumping out. And I mean, I, I personally don't, but my land is lower than theirs. And Henry S Smith had told me, he's got a stream that goes beside his property. He's, he's across the street on Main Street. A stream that goes, and it goes through a big pipe under the road, Main Street, to the other side. And I'm wondering, where is it on this chart? He said on the there's, plan. A, there's a pipe that the water carries mm -hmm. through. Um, there, the yeah, the he's, he's directly across. He's, he's almost across. Yeah. Yeah, he's I, a, I don't, across I don't think the pipe shows on this plan, but this the stream is it's to the, the north of, of this property, and this this wetland line, and, and um, feel free to, to comment, but this wetland line is the edge of the bordering vegetated wetlands that borders that stream. You're absolutely right. right. That stream is <coughs> in this direction somewhere. Right. It's not shown on the plan because we show the outer resource area that we're protecting here, the closest resource area. It won't be blocked at all. That stream that goes under the road oh, no. and comes to the no, other side. No, it would be illegal for us to block it. And, and it's up to the owner of that culvert to ensure that it gets regularly cleaned. The town is the owner. So. Um, the water does flow, I think, from west to east. It does. It does. Okay. Sir? So. Kevin Dyer, 524 Pearl Street. Okay. Um, question to the committee about the approximate 2,000 square feet of impervious material that's not going to be sitting on that area which with a standard uh, two and a half inch per hour, 100 year rainstorm, we're talking about 2,000 gallons per hour coming off of that material. Right. Which is now just vegetative land. Right, right, just right. absorbing that, that fill, that, that, that material. Right, right. And now you end up with 2,000 gallons going directly into the, the basin area. Right. No, I, I think that's a good point, and I think we would want to talk with the engineer about some kind of detention or infiltration system to address that question. This is a very large wetland area. If you've seen it, you're familiar with it. We wouldn't measurably change the amount of water going in there. That's the capacity of that wetland is huge. It's a massive wetland. I don't even know how far it goes over here, but that's a huge wetland. You could not measure the difference. Can I ask you, Scott Burger, 1301 Main Go Street? Ahead. Yeah. And as far as environmental impact, if you're now going to um, put a driveway on the Main Street, other than on Main Street, on a daily basis, I take McDonald's cups and Dunkin' Donuts cups off yeah. of my yard. Everything just flows. Now, streets get oil, gas, pollutants, stuff. Right. It's going to flow off of Main Street, down that driveway, which we think you've underestimated the slope of, and bring it right into this wetland that's got all that stuff that's on the street that's going to die. goes into that wetland right now. That's exactly where it goes, into that wetland. It's We're just not changing going to be more the rapid amount of rain channel to go down We're not asphalt. changing the amount of pollutants. They're the same pollutants that are going into the wetland right now. If I could get the town to stop using salt, and if I could stop every car from leaking oil with transmission fluid, I'm sure that would be a good idea. But I can't do it, and neither can anybody else for that matter. So those pollutants are getting into that wetland, and they're going to be there in the future, too. <coughs> yes? Um, again, Tom Walsh, 532 Pearl. I've yes. done some work on my property here, and I, I, yep. I border the wetlands, as you know. And every time I've done work, whether it be lawn or if you've walked my property, you know, a driveway. Right. They always talk about flow of water, where right. the water flow is going to go. Right. And that is the greatest concern. I had an engineer look at my driveway. I had an engineer come out, look at the, yeah. the flow of the property. 
to tell me that the flow of that water will not change and, and direct down towards probably my house, Tom O'Neill's house, whoever house that is, you know what I mean? It's just silly to me. The water, with the retaining wall the way it's set up, there's got to be water going to that side of the of the retaining wall, and it's going to come down. So again, you're taking away 2,000 foot of saturation absorption area. That water, you know, you say there's enough, but in a wet spring, I remember the spring back we had, I don't know, 12 years ago. Mm. The water levels were very high. You know, I lived through that, and my basement lived through it. So. This isn't going to help anything. We get another huge storm. So, again, I just want to make my point because I think it's important. Yeah, sir. Good thing. Tom O'Neill, 538 Pearl Street. Okay, I agree with thank Tom. you. Um, right now, I, I bought that wetland. I own part of it. And it's wet right now. So, you put all that in there, it's coming to my basement. So, so what am I going to do? I'm going to have more water than ever. The you, earlier in the evening, you referred to somebody creating a small beaver dam. This is a huge beaver dam. What if, with with the proposed additional infiltration? Um, I'm sorry, um, impervious. Surface. With the with the increased impervious on an area, you're absolutely right. The rain is going to not hit the trees and the shrubs and the grass and get seeped into the ground. The rain is going to hit this proposed as asphalt um, driveway and it's going to rush down that driveway plus the house sorry and the house and it's going to rush off the 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 roof and the solid surfaces and it's going to on a really heavy rain it's going to flow off of that and then it's going to hit what comes next which is um, either a vegetated strip in other words grass that will slow it down and give it a chance to infiltrate. If we ask for some sort of infiltration engineered chamber, it will go off the roof into um, a constructed hole in the ground that, allow that captures all of that water off the roof and puts it into a sort of an underground vault where it has an opportunity to seep into the ground naturally through gravity, just get pulled under. Um, so there are ways. Actually, if I could add to Go that, ahead. I took Jack Sullivan's invitation and went and looked at that rain garden at uh, Ravens. Have you been so by there? I have. Where, it's where? nice. Where it, was it? Uh, the dentist, Ravens, over yep. there by it. Yep. It looks nice. It looks real nice. Something it's like a that. Bit of erosion there's a little erosion. There's yeah. some trash in it, but that's, yeah, that's not that's his fault. But a, a rain garden might be the thing here too. Yeah. Anyway. I think I think we have some initial um, just before we even get to that step of talking about that part of the project, we have some real basic upfront concerns, and that is what is the wetland line? We've yes. got to get that nailed down, and that's really a starting place for our review of this project. Once we have that wetland line then we know what our setbacks are from that. And some of your construction is, you know, our setback no build zone is 35 feet. One of your corners is 35.8. So if that line Very moves cool. up, no that no house is the gonna- The walls inside the no structure zone. The orientation, the design, the layout of that proposed house, there's a lot of room for flexibility, maneuverability, and what type of house, what size, and you know how infiltration friendly it is. There's a, there's a lot of opportunity here to address these concerns and to move forward. There, there. And we, I think also the, the retaining wall, if you allow me, I think the retaining wall also has to be reviewed very, um, very intently and, and uh, very seriously because it's right on that property line and it's holding back. In some places, it's, ho it's holding up soil that's being filled in on top of existing grades. In other places, it, it might be holding back existing grade to create a new lower lawn. So he's, it's- You specified an engineered wall, so. Yeah, yeah, but wall. I'm just looking at, I'm just tracing it from the entrance near the driveway around and then in the back corner. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, it's a wall that does two things, holds back and pushes forward. 
So, yes, go ahead. Um, I also have one more um, aspect because I am, maybe it's a bad assumption, but my assumption is, is that all of, a lot of this is, is dependent upon the sewer line being extended. Because the sewer line is on my south side of my property, they need to extend it in order for them to be on town sewer to the ah. you know, north side of my property. And my, my question is, is, is if they cannot extend that for some reason, because I know people have been telling me, yeah, that blasting, because there's ledge there, is okay, but they haven't come into my basement, walked into my crawl space, and see the huge boulder, which I only have cinder blocks sitting on, that is going to be impacted in my house when they, if they do, Blasting. Blasting. So, I mean, we haven't done, nobody has done a pre-blast survey yet and have realized that that ledge literally goes from the road all the way through my house, through my house, half of my house, and we have basement and half, yeah. to the back, and then have outcroppings in the back, and to indicate that that's not going to have any impact on my house. So if that has significant impact, then they can't attach to town, the town sewer then does that mean that's a big problem for this? If, if, if they don't, I, I mean, I'm not the engineering department, um, and, and I, 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 I hear... But from a conservation standpoint, they can't, can they, put in a, they can't put in a septic system or... Uh, I'm not sure about that. They might be okay. able to put in a septic system. I don't know the rules. Fit. We allow land one on... Oh. Probably won't think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, is I, don't, the property, I don't know the rules on allowing <laughs> septic. Is the, is the property line on this map? Am I it's, missing it's that also? It's bold wall all the way back. Line. It's five acres. They yeah. might have enough They're space for, a, I don't know if the soils will perk, but they might have enough land right. for a, a septic, a drain field. Is it dependent the, the on the line is outside the buffer zone and it's in the right of way. The what is? The sewer line is, but the problem is is that in order for them to do this, I already talked to engineering, they have to blast. I can show you pictures yeah. of ledge and I can tell you it's in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I have nothing to do with that. I know, you don't. The conservation that, so that's yeah. why I said to the conservation, is, is they led, can't go ahead. do that, if they can't for some reason, I mean, I'm really concerned because I, I, I personally believe after being in this house, for 25 years, if they blast, it probably will. It's going to shake damage. your house. Well, yeah. And it will probably cause some damage. So, so we have no jurisdiction over it. But I know you we have don't. no jurisdiction, I, but the question is, is if they can't attach to, to sewer and they had to put in an alternate thing. If you don't want the project, this? that's great because it no, doesn't no, look like is it. There doesn't look like any room for septic system. Yeah, anyways. but they, they they could propose oh, one, okay. and, and uh, engineering and concom would have to rule on it. They'd I can't say it. sitting here right now that it yeah. won't work. They could come up with something. There's well, not yeah, that's what I'm saying. Too much is there separation. They could put it potentially put in there that you guys would be okay with. That's all I'm. That's all the question. It would not be. It would not be an easy plan <laughs> for them to put together. I don't think it's easily done. Is the sounds like what I hear other people on the commission saying? Well, that soil, but but it would be tough. You'd have to put in. You'd have to. So we don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I can't. I can't give you. That's all I wanted to know. I, the rest of it, I know, is not yeah. your. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you something from a practical standpoint. This guy probably checked. Checked. To see if this is okay but with the town. He has. Yes, and I talked to the town, but they haven't done a pre-blast survey. Right. So they don't know. Did they say that ever prevents blasting or just prevents to I do it in certain been, times? I was told that it does sometimes prevent blasting. So they don't know. I mean, you can't tell from just standing outside my house mm -hmm. that I have a huge boulder under half of it. Sure. Yeah. And uh -huh. the construction of the house is pretty old. We had we, two projects just last now, last week and this week go. that had blasting and i had never heard that before so i think it's being it may go, part okay. of what's happening I, think, I, I think this house is constructed a little bit different. i'm afraid i'm afraid we can't address it we can't address we can't address it, address it. so right. I understand. Th thanks for voicing your concern yeah um mr Mullen, excuse me a second i've identified four things we need from the applicant um there might be some others but one um we need to verify the wetland line Two, we need the trees identified and those that are going to be cut identified on the plan. 
identified by species and approximate diameter breast height. We need a drainage plan, and hopefully that drainage plan would include some way to um, to retain some of the drainage from the driveway and the house on the site and infiltrate it. And then the fourth thing that I have, um, I'd like to see a cross section or several cross sections of this of the retaining walls, particularly yeah. the one between the house and the um, wetland. Not a problem. I don't know. Other commissioners one. might have some other things. Yeah, too, I think I think a cross section east, west, and north, south. Um, but before we even go that far, are we going to entertain? But, are we going to entertain a retaining wall in the no structure zone? I don't think we are. That retaining wall is in the no structure zone. Th this is my thought. If that retaining wall is a single line of boulders. Which it isn't. With little or no fill behind it, that's something I could entertain. But this is not even close to that. No, it's not. Well, if I look at that, I'm, that's why I wanted a cross section. Maybe you can tell. But if I look four at feet this. Here. Four feet here. Here. here is one up in the upper right hand corner. No. Oh. There's, there's four feet here, four feet here. Thank you. Four feet here. So the wall is at least four feet over the good portion of the length. Four feet okay. Yeah. If that's the case, and they're filled behind that to level, right? That's a tough one within 35 feet. It's a structure, and the no structures. It would require a, a variance. Right, right. The wall itself is a structure, and the no structure zone. Plus, did you say too that no trees could would be cut within the 35 foot? The last. Uh, that that's not an absolute, <coughs> but it's certainly something we want to know about. We. We do not like to see a loss of trees, a net loss of trees. The trees are an important for the habitat. They're important for water management. So um, it is a big lot, though. So there may be options. Right. It is. There's so, um, to, to answer your question, Mr. Walsh, that we rarely, if ever, allow cutting within the 25 feet of healthy trees. Within the 25 feet, between 25 and 35, we sometimes do if they can replace them on site. In general, but it's a case by case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, yes, ma'am, just to introduce yourself. Yeah, please. my name is Debbie Reed. I live at um, 525 Pearl Street. Hi. And um, I have a couple questions about the wetland line as to how that's determined and what, what do you base it on? Is it an Army Corps of Engineers uh, report? Is how to what, what does it start? <coughs> You know, and, and, and how old is that report? The wetland is defined in two ways. Is, is that a question that he's going to answer? He, he's, he de delineated it, so yeah, I'm going to let him. He, he can I'm tell gonna, us how I'm he delineated him. it, and if that varied in any way from our regulations, I'll be happy to comment. Okay. Yeah. The wetland under the Wetland Protection Act is defined in two ways. It's determined firstly by vegetation, with 50% or more of the plants are wetland plants. A more accurate way to determine it is the presence of hybrid <coughs> soils. A hybrid soil is defined as water at or near the surface for a significant portion of the year. At or near the surface is 12 inches. A significant portion of the year is only 10 days during the growing season. In the presence of water uh, that close to the surface, the soil becomes anaerobic, and we get color changes in the soil, very distinct color changes. So we can estimate the depth of the water table fairly accurately. In this case, and in most cases, we use a combination of soils and vegetation. I'm a wetland scientist, a soil scientist, and a botanist. So we use all of that. And in fact, there is a topographic difference over most of these wetland boundaries. So I have no problem going out and checking it. If it's off by a little bit, we'll change it. That's OK. Uh, but I have no problem verifying that boundary. And, and how would time of year if, if, I, if, if you don't mind, I'll just comment on what he said. Okay. That, in general, is consistent with our bylaws. The, 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 uh, the variation or the refinement is that, that we have three ways of defining wetlands. The soils, as he described them, the vegetation, as he described them, and also a hydraulic connection. In other words, if there's water there. Mm -hmm. And if it has two of those three characteristics under our bylaws, it's a wetland. 
If it has w only one, it is not. But the chances of it having only one in a situation like this are almost zero. And to answer your other question, in general, time of year doesn't have any effect on the wetland boundary or the delineation. Mm -hmm. The caveat there is February and March with three feet of snow, I was working on snowshoes, sure. and I finally decided I wasn't doing any more wetland delineation. So we waited until the snow was gone, mm -hmm. or almost gone, before we delineated this. Mm -hmm. But it, it's perfectly reasonable to recheck the boundary with the commission. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, yeah, and again, I mean, <coughs> I certainly have nothing like your qualifications, and or do I play that on TV? Personally, not on TV, but <laughs> um, I, I am curious too. Is you know, I mean, they say we've had a really dry spring, so you know, we've had very wet springs. So how does that affect what you find? It doesn't, because the characteristics of a hydric foil soil form relatively rapidly. Within that 10 day period or two week period, mm -hmm. the colors start to change and you get the, what we call redoxymorphic features in the soil. Uh, those redoxymorphic features, once they form, they never go away. So I have found redoxymorphic features in areas that I knew were not a wetland because they were clearly drained out. But I have no choice but to say it's the it's a wetland by definition, even though I don't believe that the water table is within 12 inches of the surface. If, for example, we had a higher water table here yes, which 10 years ago, and the water table were up for three weeks, uh, I could be getting the oxymorphic features, and I would be saying this is a wetland. Mm -hmm. okay. If I could just um, you know, also express concern about the runoff and the amount of water that could eventually be in my neighbor's um, basement, because yeah. I experienced it. Um, about 20 years ago when Nugent Lane was put in, yeah. um, when they moved the wetlands with huge amounts of cement. And um, all the houses that are up against it, we all have huge amounts of water. Um, I We put in a pump system. Other people didn't, and it's not uncommon to see the fire department there pumping out their basements. Yeah. So I would hate to yeah. see that happen to my neighbors who, um, as they've already stated, they get water. So again, you're, you're, you're going to address it, but I, I just need to vocalize. All right, thank you. It is a pain. Yes, it is. Thank you. Again, just to follow up on that, I'm curious. Um, you represent, you're here to represent, I guess, the seller of the land or the developer. The potential so he's, buyer. So he's paying you to do this work. The potential buyer of the property. Right. Okay. What, what I'm interested in is, as a group of people here potentially, or maybe as a board, would, would there ever be a situation where you would do an independent evaluation of the land as opposed to someone who has the best vested interest in this piece of property? Yes, we, we've done that on several occasions. Okay, is that common? Is that uncommon? I, I would say it's, it's, it's uncommon, but it's, uh, it's not rare. This, um, if there was a dispute between the commission and the representative of the uh, applicant, um, as to that wetland line, then we would hire at the applicant's expense an uh, uh, independent outside wetland scientist to resolve the difference of opinion on that line. Um, for the drainage, um, for the drainage plan, we have our in-house expert Brian Sullivan check it. We also have engineering, ten engineering department check it, and we have. Um, we have contemplated going to an outside expert to track the drain drainage, but usually our engineering department is, provides a pretty good backstop. Probably wouldn't do it for a single family house lot. Though. No, it would be unusual. It would be for a large, larger project. Right. Uh, actually, that one off uh, Cross Street, we did, we were going to hire an independent, but um, that was a single family. But okay. it, it, it has been done, but you, I think that uh, usually, particularly with a certified wetland scientist, and the board, we can reach uh, reach agreement on where that line is. But if we don't, we hire an ex outside expert to resolve the difference. Okay, and um, I'd like to wrap this up so we can we got a couple more hearings after you. Okay. So go ahead. Just one more question yep. about the uh, trees that are in the twenty five foot buffer. Were right. There, are there any plans on requesting the applicant uh, protect them like they did on uh, West Street? 
Um, we can clearly consider that. Um, you know, at the one of the before that we even get there, um, one thing that I concur, Mr. Mon has asked for is is that uh, trees plan intended to be cut to develop the lot need to be um, tagged, tell us, you know, identified as their type um, <coughs> and what their diameter is. That gives us some sense of their age. Um, and, and so we get a count on often on these proposed plans of how many trees are going to get removed, um, what's the size of that tree, and, um, and how many they plan to replace. I'm actually worried about the ones that are in the 25 foot buffer that we, those we rarely allow, we don't, we don't rarely go. if ever allow cutting no, of like, trees. Sorry, my 25. concern is the typical construction backhoe swinging into them. Right. Well, that's and actually peeling bark off and killing them that way. Yeah. Right. Yep, that's exactly, good, you know, we concern. can't we can't stop accidents from happening or, you know, that said, we do when work does happen, we have a limit of work line defined on the plans and, and that's usually, usually where the erosion control with, is set up yeah with the erosion control um, and sometimes and the orange construction fence you know like but, we see on but that's Street part also. of that's part of our permitted stipulation is that they are clearly told and it's clear to everybody involved in the project where where is a stopping point in the project that they cannot go past a certain point mm -hmm. with any equipment okay so thank you um is there is there a mo is there a motion to continue or I just, I just want to go over the list uh, and Jamie go is ahead. that uh, drainage plan going to give us uh, where groundwater is um, it will I have hope to. so it yeah. will have to in order to put a, a drainage basin in they have to find the groundwater so. okay also so I thought true. of another one too we need a um, we, we need to uh, uh, a drawing that clearly shows that drop going from Main Street down to that lot because I I don't think this, I think it misses that wrong. drop. I don't think it's wrong. I think it just misses, misses that quick drop somehow. Maybe, maybe the, the, the elevation in the gutter isn't correct. It might be off. So Th That would do it. Yeah. <laughs> you can verify that. That would be part of the cross section. Good. Now, you were saying that you wanted it east, west, and north, south. So that's where the cross section would be. Thing. Well, no, w I, we were talking, I was talking, I don't know about Anika, but I was talking about a cross section of the retaining wall. But now I see this detail, and I, that me. tells me what I need to know. I think. I don't. I don't, I don't think, think it. it does. I, I think when you put that, I mean, that cross Site section cross shows you idea. something. Okay. But but we don't know what's happening between here and there. Right. We don't know what's happening between here and here. Right. And okay. so it's kind of. Yeah, outside of the thirty-five foot. It's a little foot. challenging. Yeah, you're right. Outside of the thirty-five foot, we typical. might commit something. I think it would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Just to see what that wall is holding back and where the, you know. Um, okay. Was there something else you wanted to add, Jamie, or Chuck? You Chuck, are just tell the list if there's something yeah. you can. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, uh, confirm the wetland line, trees. Um, identify the trees that are going to be cut. Uh, drainage plan, cross section, uh, east, west, north, south. <coughs> uh, retaining wall, cross section. Uh, I wrote down replanting plan but that might be too early right now mm -hmm. uh, understand the fill and confirm topo yep yep that's yep. that's okay, the ones that those are our by. basics to start with uh, on the trees the, the species but also the width yeah the diameter of breast height ddh okay will there be another site visit by the commission oh yeah i'm sure there will will we be informed of that <coughs> um we uh Unless Those site visits are not posted. Plus, this is private property. Since they've submitted an application, the commissioners can go on that private property. It's up to the property owner to either allow or not other people on that private property. Okay. Yep. Just because, as you know, <laughs> the access to this private property is yes. very uh, difficult. It's not yes. going to be informed before you Yes, we, we certainly, and if you wouldn't mind, if we, we'll to consolidate in one car, if you don't mind, if we park in your, your driveway. If you consolidate Would, in one car, I can. Is that be allowable? <laughs> yeah. So, Chuck, let's make sure we, we let her know of the Is your Is your uh, contact information on the sign-in sheet? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. All right. And your name's on the plan. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, Chuck, is it if you got a fairly straightforward picture? Yeah, yeah, I have that okay. list. I'll send right. it to Jack. And All right. Um, I, I, I'd like to move we continue the hearing to the next meeting, which is May. Well, will that give you enough time to provide us with this information? We would need it by when, Chuck? Next Monday? Uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. It should be enough time. If it isn't, we'll ask for a continuous okay. point in time ahead Which, in advance. Yeah. Okay. We also have, have, this also opens up that Memorial Day site visit challenge again. So, um, That's right. Um, I mean, again, I am available during the week if. Um, what about a Tuesday night yeah. site visit if people are going away for the weekend? Yeah. Like next Tuesday? Well, Monday's Memorial or Day. More the, yeah. A week from next Monday. Yeah. A week from like next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Mm. <laughs> About a week from next Tuesday. Okay. What's that date? Okay. It's the 26th. The <laughs> it's, the day, it's the day before the meeting. It's the 26th, so. I will not be available. Okay. Would you? You need to see it, sorry. I'm going to have to go at a different time because I'm going to be at another conservation hearing. Okay. When I, when it won't be as much fun on. as this one. Okay. You're never available during the week, right? It's difficult. Yeah. No. Um, okay. Okay. So, so, just so you know, there's another option. If, uh, I know in the front of the, the, the colonial chorus of the old Holmes house there, like the policeman sat there to watch for cars. So that's another option if you don't feel comfortable parking in my driveway. Okay, sure thank you. And you can just walk across to move <coughs> down into that. Okay. If you walk across, you're going to help. Dive down into yeah. the side. Yeah, well, yeah. I've yeah, done actually, it. you have to, if you really want to get, the best way to get in is to walk behind my house yeah. and go in that way. Gotcha. Because otherwise, there's a there's brush and there's a pretty good size, again, close to the road, it's a good size drop down. All right. Gotcha. All right, we'll work it out. So, um, motion to continue the hearing to the 27th. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out, everybody. We're going to move on to the next hearing. <coughs> yep, 45 Causeway Road. We, we're not going to close. We're not going to close it because we're not closing the hearing. Okay. Thank you. Really tight. I know. We're going to try and get this. We'll do this uh, by, like we're going to try and get through this. Okay, um, so at this point we have before us the, the request for determination of applicability for Reading Municipal Light Department, substation 4. Um, I assume you're here to represent. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and just describe the project. Don't close it all the way. Or put that, Just Brian, put that sign. That says open, open meeting. Put it on the outside mm -hmm. door now. Thank you. Okay. This is part of open meeting law. Yep. We got to make sure people know they can still come in and join. Um, okay. Uh, so as part of that, we're looking to install a low permeability soil berm on the western portion of the property around Transformer D. It's a pretty big transformer. And uh, as it sits now, uh, the gravel pack would not have the capacity to contain a worst case release from that Transformer D. Uh, so we're looking to put in a 65 foot long, with a 12 foot angle, and just uh, keep any potentially released oil from that transformer from running down that hill into the wetland. Uh, we're not proposing to break any ground. Just want to rake back the gravel pack that's there, put in a load permeability firm, ready base, compact it, uh, add a little bit of crushed stone, and uh, increase oil retention capacity. Do we know what kind of oil is in that uh, transformer? Yep, mineral oil, dielectric fluid. It's uh, not a particularly viscous petroleum product. Uh, 
doesn't move too well, but it, that's a big transformer. If it let go, there's like a electrical conduit trench that also functions as a oil uh, retention trench uh, that goes around most of the other transformers. These just kind of out there on its own. Uh, so we, we're looking to create that berm to direct any oil flow right into that trench. So what's what's underneath the, what's to stop it from, from infiltrating down into the ground? Um, nothing, it's sand. Uh, but as far as uh, the, you know, the SPCC regulations, you don't have to stop it from going into the ground. You just <coughs> need to impede its flow hmm. directly into a natural water or wetland. On this plan, um, up in the upper left-hand corner, the says location of proposed impermeable material berm to be installed, and then in the legend it says location of proposed low permeability. Yeah, I mean, low. Per it would be a low permeability. It would be a graded base material soil berm. So that's just a typo. Yes. Okay. Which which one's the typo? Impermeable, impermeable. or low? Impermeable. Impermeable yeah. is a typo. Um, do you have, can you get a little more specific about exactly what that material would be? It's a you know, pre-spec crushed stone and uh, it's like roadway it's like base. It's a process material. Road, yeah, roadway road base. Yes. Yeah. So it's a pretty, it's a well-graded uh, roadway base that they use probably under all the roadways around here. Um, it's probably similar to what's under the pad. Is that correct? Uh, on, on the ground. The gravel pack. On yeah. the ground. Yeah. Throughout yeah. most of it, there's yeah. a, like an inch layer of that down there. Yep. So with the transformer, is, is there secondary containment? I mean, if it let go, does it get? Is it something we, to hold it? It's on a pad, and there's gravel pack all around it. This but would be the secondary yeah, containment. Yeah, this is the proposed secondary. Um, is, um, what's the distance from the wetlands to the transformer? Uh, so on the, you know, top of the plan side, that top of the trench is 68.2 feet from, you know, the edge of the berm to the wetland there, and on the, uh, bottom southern side, 55 feet. Okay, um... I've worked on mineral oil contamination sites before, and they're a joy compared to almost anything else you can imagine. <laughs> is there an issue? Is if, there much of an issue with the mineral oil? If it gets in the surface waters directly, it creates a layer that prohibits uh, gas transfer between the water and the atmosphere. But if it's it, even if it does go through the groundwater or through the um, through the groundwater, through the soil, which it probably won't, um, and gets the surface water and comes in underneath, it wouldn't be as biodegradable. It's, it, it adheres to the soil particles. It's, it's. Um, Do you, are you familiar with this particular mineral oil dielectric fluid? Okay, and the the fate transport properties of that. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, you know, PCBs, which used to yeah, be used in Yeah, this was PCBs. Plus, it's a law they have not to be gone. But, it's not, but PCBs are not PCBs. soluble. And if this is a similar material, it also mm. would tend to be a soil-adhering it, it, compound. It is a soil-adhering compound. It um, and but it, bio, it biodegrades. That's the, that's the big deal. Well, that would be. On the scale of petroleum products, it is on the closer to Pam cooking spread. Yeah. <laughs> it's it good we've moved there. Yeah, it Don't just it contains like some petroleum hydrocarbon fractions, so that it's you know uh, regulated. Yeah, regulated. But so you buy mineral oil and you put it on your skin and so on. Right. right. Um, <laughs> this um, this this CLF. What is that again? Chain link fence. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I had to check the legend. Conservation Law Foundation. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and who? So Basmain's Wetland Consulting delineated the wetlands. Did you go there? You know, 
I looked at that drawing and I said, if they're building a spill prevention system, I agree. I and I, no I had some conflicts that night, so I, that was when I fence. skipped. It's inside It's in the existing gravel path. And we've area. been all over that site. It's I think something okay. else like this came through two years ago or three yeah, years. They ago did a great something. job the last thing they yeah. did, so okay. I had confidence in. So I, no, I did not go. Okay. I guess I'm just curious. Why is it so long? Uh, for the berm. The retention capacity. Oh. You need under you know the SPCC plan. You need to be able to contain a worst case release from any of your largest volume uh, okay. petroleum storage things, and to stop Transformer D if it let go everything from getting down the hill. That's the like the yeah. berm you need. So right now, underneath that transformer, there's crushed stone. There's a concrete pad and crushed stone. Up to the chain link fence, it'll, is it all stone? <coughs> pretty much. Okay. I okay. think there might be like six inches. <coughs> just free to are you gonna sitting there at the corner now? When you put this berm in, are you going to dig down a little bit under that crushed stone, or no? Just We're going to rake back all the crushed stone uh, in the area, just enough to pop it down. So, I mean, this is. Technically, it's already a disposal site, uh, so we do not want to move any of the native Dish. soil around. Yeah, and we yeah. don't want to have to okay. cause any more problems. Right. You dig it up, you own it. Yep, yep. they own it already. So, yeah. um, why was the delineation done in 2010? Because that's when we did the major cleanup of the substation. Yeah, we we had we done a lot of work down there. They have some nice facilities. Um, any other questions? No? Any questions from the public? No? Um, okay. I move we issue a negative determination for the retention area for RMLD. Okay. I second. All those in favor? All those in favor? Okay. All right. So we will um, draft a, a negative determination and it's drafted do you guys want to sign it yeah sure yeah let's do it Mr. get it off the list over here i like it that's what you get with a full-time position that's when did good. you start that's this good. monday or monday. last monday no just this monday it really wasn't that smooth but it was yeah. it started to feel good you know? <laughs> especially because feel... you don't have to drive all that distance yeah it did so did they hire somebody in boxford no no no, they, I don't know what they're going to do there. I think they need to figure out what they want to do. No more building in boxes. There's enough houses there. No, it's not that. There's, <laughs> there's other things going on. Okay. While we're passing that so around, let me just read what Chuck gave me. Um, can you, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. You, you can stay if you want. We've we've signed the negative determination, so okay, you I will. Can just, uh, contact Chuck and get yeah. Copy. Yeah. I will send it out to um, the address, which is actually you want to. If you want a copy, you're gonna have to contact me because it's gonna go to Reading Municipal Light. All right. <coughs> All right. I'll let you know. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, please. This is our standard language in the uh, order of conditions. The okay. only can I can I ask can I ask you to, to hang on to that, and so that we can get to a, one more agenda item. Well, two more. Two. That we're a little past due on. Hang on to that. That's good. So um, I'd like to get to seven Adams Way. Um, Help me. Is, is this? Are, are you Danielle? Yeah, yeah. Can you just pronounce your last name? Bartico. Okay, thank you. I was going to try and pronounce it. Um, just my brain's a little. It's not going to pronounce it. It's going to mangle it. It's not going to work. Um, welcome. You had, you gave us, um, you filed a request for a determination of applicability for Seven Adams Way. Can you just briefly describe what you'd like to? 
Sure. Do? Um, right now there's an in-ground pool with an existing fence around mm -hmm. it. Yep. Um, we'd like to move part of that fence to uh, go closer to the pool um, and continue the fence around the playground area for our three school children. Okay, can you um, just sort of show, like highlight on the plan where you want to remove the fence and put yeah, it in the playground? Yeah, so I, I have to like, around yeah. this, yep. one. Okay. Um, so the, it doesn't have a fence on it, but I know, I, it doesn't have a fence on it, so, but these are the markers, the 25 foot um, cement things yep. that are in the ground, and the fence goes right along yep. them. So the fence goes like this and then comes to a point and then yeah. comes back this way. The okay. existing fence. The existing right. fence. Right. So we want to take that point and just kind of, we want it to go um, around the spot close up. To the spot. So, you, so you're saying, so in this one, it's take this sharp fence and turn it into yeah, and this will fence. yep, and this will stay the same. That will stay there, and then we'll continue it where this yellow is from the new fence okay. to the playground area. Okay, and so the playground will go in this area. Yeah, and the slides the slide will empty out into this new like triangle that we're kind of getting back. Okay, so there'll be two separate gated areas for the pool and the playground. <coughs> okay, is, is everybody on the commission? Pretty clear on that. Yeah. Now I am. Okay. I yeah. wasn't before. Sorry. Yeah. That's and okay. Even the fence guys that had come out are confused. <laughs> so there's a, basically there's the existing fence. They got round the corner and they're going to add an additional fence further away from the resource area than the existing fence. I think it's right. a non-issue for me. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And it's this just, is not a national heritage area, right? It's just a playground area. Yeah. So right. Yeah. Right. And it's not not a national heritage. Do we know if it's a national heritage area? <laughs> Um, I can say it's not. It's we have probably not. One's out in like Terminex Swamp. Oh. A special habitat not area. Not Terminex Swamp, uh, Cedar Swamp. By the state. Hold on oh, a second, right. I'll go there. I'm just thinking in terms of the, the you know the fence off the ground. So uh, if it's not in National Heritage Area, then I'm not, I'm not concerned with that either. I don't. I'm not sure if it is, or I don't think that's identified on the forms. Not on the Not on, the the not on this form. form. Yeah. It's, it probably isn't. There aren't many areas in town that are that are designated national heritage areas. Are you checking it, Chuck? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be putting the same fence that was already approved by the previous owners. Okay. Back. Th this is immediately adjacent to that trail, yeah. which we permitted a few months ago. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, with the boardwalk. No, certainly yeah. not. Oh. No. Okay. This one here. Oh yeah. There and yeah. Right in the center. Yeah. Right. So I mean, wh where the, where that fence is going is 10, 15 yards from the trail. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trail's right where your thumb is. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. I don't. I don't have any issues. Are you? Do you have a concern? Um, the, um, the, the applicant um, mentioned that she might be doing some plannings um, either just inside or just outside the new trail just to create a screen which I think would be a good idea um, and plannings I would prefer to see some native plantings rather than ornamentals or certainly not invasive so um, that the, the determination should be the planning should be uh, native vegetation that's the only thing I had. So we're requiring, or we're just saying if 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 they, if, if, if they are playing. Asked me if we had thought about it, and I we hadn't given any thought until you had mentioned it. So yeah. I didn't honestly. We just bought the house in August. I don't know what I can and can't do right. because we're, we're in the buffer zone. So yes, the yeah. trail is there. People walk by. You know, and our yeah. children. That's why we want the fence so our children are safe from strangers, basically. So. Yeah. Yeah, the trail committee has some strange people. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, but they're only they're four the years old, people. four, three, and one. So like, well, a lot of people do Actually, walk true. their dogs on trails there are, too. There's a lot of people that walk their dogs on that trail and don't pick up after them. Yes, well, that yeah, that's true. It's a problem. That's true. You walk, well, I've witnessed right. it. And that's I, true. Yeah, you it, feel yeah. free to tell them that it's against the regulations because that's conservation land. They have to take it out. I know. Yeah. So, it's well, not yeah. true of ten forests, but it's true of conservation oh, land. Oh, okay. Yeah. People always say it's natural. Well, so is an asbestos. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not so natural when you step in it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chuck, all I'm saying is that the, any planning should be native vegetation. 
or it, yeah. And you said you had a list of whatever was needed that I could yeah pick and choose from or is that yeah check no. yeah I'll uh, yes, I'll I have a list that's real easy and I could add that to what I've written up already if you want to approve as amended we could okay so I have the sign tonight. Um, make a motion. Yeah, let me uh, just I have ask a question. I have some questions here. Oh. Um, the the exist, existing fence looks like it's within right at the 25 zone of natural vegetation, and as you go along, you're gonna turn your one of the fences like this, but then you're gonna put a fence like here. Is that yeah. the fence is going to um, it's gonna come up our property line this way. So away from the wetlands. Like this, right? Yeah, and then back to the deck. So we're so we're not so we're just coming from this this point here, this corner where the existing fence is. Kind of like that. Yeah. Yep. See the blue line. So I, then I don't understand what this is. What's this? This is just continuation of the fence, and this is our property line, oh. and then we're coming back over for the fence. So you're continuing the fence this way. Yeah, away from the wetlands. Yeah. Well, the wetlands right there. So no, there's a wetland flag right there. There's oh, that's not on this. Yes, map. it is. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Well, no, they're going away oh, from so that. Oh, so This is why I was confused with this. They're going go parallel, and then they're going away from the wetlands. If I, as I understand it. Yeah, we are going away from because this is the tra this is the trail goes this way. This is the wetland here. No, this no. is the trail for Kirchian Kirchian Way or Kirchian whatever, and woods. then woods, yeah. and then we're we're right we're putting a fence that is along that. They will not, as I understand it, they will not be any closer to the wetlands than they are right now. And as a matter of fact, everything will be farther away from the wetlands than they are. Yeah, right we're now. just going to mimic our property line, but we're not going any further than that post, which is the 25 foot mark. There's nothing over here, there's no markers over here. See, that's flag number one. Right. Where's the rest of the wetland? Do you know? That's what you're saying. What's that's west where, it's, of that's where it starts, as far as I know. The flags are no longer on the ground. Yeah. You know, if, 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 from my memory, Rebecca, if, if you're to go from flag three to flag two to flag one, I mean, my memory is it just sort of continues in that trend from like yeah, flag six towards flag right one. Now. It's just sort of, I don't think it gets much closer <laughs> to the property or farther away. I think it just sort of continues until it hits the Kirchian Woods trails. And those are like raised boardwalks, so the boardwalks go over the wetlands. Yep. And then so it just, it just kind of continues west. And right on the other side of the trail is another house with a fence. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what the, she's showing is the fence going to the property line, along yeah. the property line, right, and then back to the deck. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so going it's all like the way this. to the property. I was wrong. It's going. On this way. Like this. Yes. And, and then, then back. back to the deck. Yeah. yeah. more questions? No? Any questions from the public? No? Okay. Um, I move we issue a negative determination uh, with conditions as discussed tonight. Second. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, Chuck, did you have that? Drift? I did. Oh, fabulous. He's right on. Fabulous. <laughs> Okay, so we'll sign uh, your negative determination, and if you haven't been through this process before, negative determination is what you what you are looking for. Okay. If if we had a positive determination, that would mean that you would need to refile for this work as a notice of intent, which is a much more involved, elaborate okay. preparation, <coughs> more elaborate permit. So. So we say no, you don't have to file for a notice of intent. And if you have any questions at all about what's allowable in your backyard and what's not allowable, it, it, check your, I know this, everybody does this, I'm being sarcastic, check your deed, okay. there may be um, conditions and stipulations attached to it. Yeah, actually Chuck gave me, um, I think and I saw him up the from the previous yeah. landowner. So read that if there's anything that you have questions on, call us and call Chuck and and we're happy to talk 
we'd rather talk to people up front than have then come back and tell them they have to come in and with an enforcement order. Yeah, no, I okay, we don't plan so on doing anything else besides uh, the uh, so. Okay. Lost my one forty seven post. Okay. So I'm I'm okay to move forward with the fist yes. and all that. Three ten days. Have to wait ten days. Here you go. But you could. So, well, this. Is that 147? Pearl Street? Okay. So, I'll do that. Mm, this, is, it has a that has, has this is 7M. I can. Because we're already five weeks out from the fence and the playground in 11 schedules. So, I might, would have to cancel. Nine. 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 Agenda item here. I promise not to cut a whole lot of trees and build no bridges. Okay. Are you good? <laughs> um, request, you got it. request for determination of applicability, 147 Pearl Street. You're Mr. Duffy? Yes. Hi, okay. um, Thank you, guys. I, I you know you have oh. a night. Oh, that's funny, because on the form it says Walnut Street. So I was confused. Oh, I was at first, Street. but. I live, in, I live on Walnut Street. I'm sorry. I probably fill it out wrong. I no, no, no. That's where it you back live. Me 17 it's, times nope. to do it that's again. fine. I no, just. Like <laughs> project location. Now I. I'm okay. Sorry. I'm on board now. Okay. Do you want to just briefly describe what you'd like to do? Yeah. There, there's currently a uh, existing. Uh, it, was a, it was a three season porch. Uh, it was closed in. It was a living area. And when we purchased the property, um, it was you know it was six feet of snow. Um, we had no idea what the conditions of the footings were, and once you know we removed all the snow and everything, we found that there um, you know the footings aren't really sufficient for the for the structure. Um, so it's an existing structure, and we'd like to just put the the, uh, the permanent footings in that are required by the building department. Okay. Um, to hold it. Um, and then uh, I, I, uh, Chuck has been out to the site a couple of times with us. It needs, you know, a little bit of cleaning, and you know, on on you know, there's some debris which we've taken care of. Um, we put up a, um, you know, the black fence, um, that, you know, the debris, you know, okay. to keep the debris during construction and everything. We try to keep it as clean as possible. So, um, we, you know, we just like to put the footings back in place. There's a couple of treatments that are, you know, just hanging in the driveway if that's possible to trim just a couple of. Uh, small branches back. I don't even think they're an inch round. And, uh, okay. Okay. Um, at, at this point, so I'm looking at so I'm looking at the plan, and and it, I can tell by site visits, Jamie, you went, and it's mostly the work is mostly underway and done. Um, where is the resource area? It's, it's, the st it's the stream. It'll be if you turn that picture around, it'll be on your left hand side. Okay. So it's the town of Reading. Yeah, it's the easement. Yeah. So easement. this, uh, just to give you a little more background, um, yeah. this was one of those permits that goes out through the building department, and later on, several people call and say, "What's going on?" So I got to the site, and obviously, it's a we're remodeling the house. Yeah. And um, and I think they had gone through it a little bit more than they thought about when they got their permit. So they had to do the they had to do the porch footings. Uh, to me, it was going to be some landscaping, some planting, and some cleanup. And uh, uh, certainly, a line needed to be established that was a, a no-go line. And that line on the property right now is clearly a, a lot, um, a lot <coughs> closer to the wetland than the 25 feet, which we usually allow. It might be 10 feet. So I did talk to Steve and people on site, and they came down uh, and filled out the correct paperwork. And it almost looks like you haven't done any work in that area. Where well, I, I, the, yeah. I didn't do any of the any of the work on the on that porch. The porch is, you know, we put the siding up and everything, but we didn't dig any footings or anything. We didn't touch any of that once. You know, we were no, you know, when we came down to get the permit, there was no. You know, in all fairness, though, as well, it was like when we bought the house, it was like six feet of snow. We didn't even <laughs> realize there was anything there. Uh, we saw, you know, a little bit of water under there, but we didn't realize that we came down with building permits and. and so the the work could go forward now. Are you going to remove that slab? No, the slab's going to stay existing. The slab will stay where it is. Okay. The problem. The is slab is, under the porch. 
Yeah, there's a there's a current slab, a concrete slab. Right. It looks like probably 50 or 60 years ago. It might have been a patio for somebody, and then they've made a three season porch, you know, back in the day. But it, it's been a long time. Um, and then what happens mm -hmm. is the porch, the, the 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 four by fours that were holding the existing porch up, we took them out and we you know put some temporary bracing in, and then we found that the footings that were existing were just sitting on the slab. So it, it's it's nowhere strong enough to hold, you know, an, an old existing, so then we, you know, got, you know, Chuck come down and we, you know, now it's in order to hold that existing structure, the slabs have to be, I, I believe, 30 by 30 by 4 feet deep, and we are too close to the, you know, to your, to the, your property and the, and the, and the wetlands to, to be able to do it without your approval. Well, Chuck, there must have been a breakdown in the system when they got their building permit. There was a breakdown in the system. And I asked Glenn, so this was caught because I know that this house is going to be fixed up and sold. And the, when they looked at it, it's this is what we need to do. We, conservation doesn't give a permit on roofing, siding, windows, things like that. But if that's not, that's all that was talked about. But just knowing what was happening, I said, that, come on, this is this more that's going to happen on this site. You know, we're not going to sell it with the lawn like this. Or may, but it needed to be talked about. And maybe this site will be sold that way. But most houses are fixed up from, you know, from A to B, A to C. No, we, you know? we, we are. We're, right. Like, like so we I just wanted to go down, understand what was happening. Uh, but it didn't stop by me reviewing permits. It was the neighbor called. I would have never known this was going on because our system, and we have talked about it, although... I don't have much support. Um, I, I believe that everything should go through our view permit system no matter what, and everything should be reviewed. There's not much support for that because they really want to get these permits out quick. Um, so we could turn on those filters where I would be actually checking off on electrical and plumbing jobs. So they can't do that, so they've backed it off a bit. So we miss a few. We rely on Glenn and, and uh, Kim Saunders to pick this up. And Kim does a great job, and so does Glenn, but some of them get through, and that's what happened here. So uh, we have an opportunity to have a natural vegetated bank next to that stream, um, and then whatever else you choose. And some cleanup, actually, because there's a lot of stuff Yeah, there's there. yard waste in the resource yeah. area. But and I don't know how to prevent but those, that. Because those new I'm footings are going to be, like you said, 10 or 15 feet from the resource area. Yeah, but the, he's, what he's actually, <laughs> so how I kind of get over that is that was supported. What was there was supported. It needs to be brought up to current code, so he has to put in the Bigfoots or something. Yeah, it's just what, what it was is it was a, it was like, say, a, 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 it's approximately an eight inch slab. And it was all, and then they built, they took the four by fours and just set them on the slabs and built the room. Yeah. And now under today's current codes, I can't set it on an eight foot slab. So. So so what's going to happen to the slab? The slab's going to stay. Into, um, we're not going to touch it. I'm going to. It, it actually makes a nice Put little spot for in. you know bikes and different things like that. So it actually it, you know with with a little bit of. It know, looks a little uh, rough over there. You're not going to do anything else, like. Well, see. After after discussing with you know after discussing with you and being so close, I don't want to you know I'm I'm not looking to well the transition from the time. slab from the slab onto the ground the grade isn't the same level it's, there's a no, there's, there's a drop a, there's like yeah there's a step up so but you know yeah. after after you came out I want the okay of you guys or whatever you'd like me to do I, I will be happy to comply with whatever you need to do I need to but well, you're problems, you're gonna have you to break well, you're gonna have to break some of that slab to put in the new footing. There's only two. There's only going to be the the slab ends right at the end of the house. So I am literally just going to chip a corner out and then set them down. So I won't be breaking very much of it. So you're using those elephant foot sauna tubes. Sauna tubes. Well, the new the new code, um, the elephant foot sauna tubes won't apply for this particular case. The new deck requirements, I I believe, are 30 inches by 30 inches, and I got to go four feet. You know, below the cross. So you cannot, in Penn Reading, you cannot put a deck on sauna tubes? Well, this is a room. It's not a deck. It's, oh. it's a room. It was, it was made into like a, 
like it was a living room. You know, it was like a three season type porch with windows, doors. So it's there. So in order to comply, after talking to Glenn when we first discussed it, he asked me what the footings were there. I said, as soon as the snow goes away, we'll, I'll, I'll come in and see you. And you know, we'll go over whatever I need to do for footings. So you need a 30 inch by 30 inch four foot column, concrete column. Right. Is what wow. the, is what the, Does it have to be reinforced? No, no, it's just poured. It, they, it, they just got away from. A lot of concrete. They got away from. They got away from the sauna tubes. There are cases where you can still You're use the sauna mitigation. tubes. You know, so. So after after discussing <laughs> with with you tonight, my options, I will discuss it with the building department tomorrow and, and come well, up. Well, a, a, a so thirty. How many of those are going in? There's not, there's actually I can get away with two, but I'd like to put the third one in if possible, just so it, it doesn't have any. You know. He's going to have to bring some heavy equipment in there to put those. No, it'll be hand dug. And there's you're going to you're gonna hand dig Absolutely. 30 by 30. Yeah, 30 by 30. I'll hand dig it because I can't get a machine in because it's under the house. It's currently under the room. If you look at the plan, on the, oh, on yes. the plan, it's under a room. So you have to hand dig. Like when you build decks now, the new code on the decks, all the footings on the decks now, when you land at the bottom step of the deck, you have to go 18 by 4 yeah. feet by 4 feet, even on a deck. By the new, th there's a over in the building department. They have a book that's probably be a, a quarter of an inch thick of, of regulations on footings now. So it's going to change the whole concept of people wanting a lot to of cement them. in the ground. A lot of cement in the ground. I bet you personally aren't going to dig those. No, I personally hands. will do it. I personally will. My, my son will volunteer yeah. to help me, but I will personally dig. You don't, you don't have a gym membership, do you? You're not going to. No, need I it. don't need <laughs> it. I used to have a gym membership. Yeah, you don't need it. That's about a yard of concrete per column. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if the requirements, though, if, if, you know, whatever it is, I mean, technically, I, I think it's a 14-inch on tube, but now with the new deck code that's being enforced, it's changing everything. It's still kind of um, new to everything, so it's another thing that we'll have to deal with. So do I see on this plan you have erosion control? Yes. Set up? There's yeah. a silk fence out there now. Yeah, it's okay. a silk fence. Um, after Chuck came by and discussed it, I, I you know, got it up. This. Um. So what are the conditions between those footings and the resource area? Is it's only 10 feet. Yeah, it's 10 feet. Right, right now it's flat. more more or less, no, it's a slope down. And it's pretty much bare soil. I mean, there's some things growing in there, but it's pretty much. What? It's shaded by trees? Or? No, it's just been a lot of activity. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it could use some, could use some revegetation, it sounds like. Yeah, and also that's, um, that's a lot of soil. Where are you going to stockpile that soil? Uh, I'll take it right out. Take it right out of there. There's a few spots in the yard, in the backyard, that have little, you know, it's just, it, the yard, the property's never been taken care of. So there's like little divots and little things. I could always just relocate it over there if it's okay with you and just fill in the yard. It wouldn't change, it wouldn't change the grade. It's probably, it's probably each hole is probably five, six wheelbarrows that I could, you know, distribute around the yard or I could take it out if you so choose. As long as you do, we, we would need to prohibit the stockpiling of soil in a man within 35 feet of the resource area. Yeah, I, I would instantly, as soon as I took take it out, it right I will take it out yeah. of the yeah. wheelbarrow. And when I get to the last, it's only going to be a couple of feet of soil that I'm going to be able to use. The rest of it's going to be clay and all kinds of other things. That's going to get taken out of there because nothing, if I spread it around the yard, nothing will grow. So. So. So removing the soil, that's one condition I think we have. Um, plantings, are, are we going to have a, so th these footings are within 10 feet of the resource. I say 10, I didn't measure it, but Roughly. it's pretty close. Yeah. Um, how many plantings, I know, is it for the whole property line? Well, I, I would suggest again, submit a planning plan for our approval. Okay. Were you thinking about a fence in that area? I, I, after, after real, you know, after where we were, I, I if a fence, what, you know, I, I didn't think of a fence because it's just, it's really nice. I mean, you, you, you know, you get the stream, you get the, you know, if it was raked up and we, we did extensive cleaning and I don't know if you saw the yard originally, but we've done extensive cleaning on, on, on our property and we just didn't want to go over into, into your area until, you know, we met with you and discussed our options, but, um, you know, I, I, a fence could be an option. I mean, every, you know, everybody else has one. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's not something that I, you know, planned on. I'm just, you know, kind of leaving it natural as it is. I mean, it, it, okay. it's very nice. So. Just asking. 
Because it would make a difference with the plants. Okay. So I either buy your plants or plants. Uh, I don't know I if that's the option. Right. You just tell me what know. you'd like. I mean, I'm good with whatever you guys would like to see, to be honest. I'd, I'd vote for the plants. I, I would too. <coughs> I would too, as long as the You will have dug enough holes. You don't need to <laughs> do, dig fence posts. Though. Well, now I know I put the dirt in the fence post. What am I going to do with your dirt now that I'm digging your holes? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this way. Whatever you'd like. You know, some, some way to sort of uh, set that area off as, as a little bit different from the rest of the lawn, the yep. rest of the yard, yep. so that it's... it's and. Uh, what would you suggest? Give me some examples. I mean, we've had um, bushes, we've had uh, perennials. Oh, yeah. There's been, you know, trees can go in there. We've got, um, we've got a list, a whole list. If you've been oh, here for the, you know, we've got a list of wetland friendly or and native mm -hmm. species that um, that support local habitat mm -hmm. uh, value and uh, provide exactly what you know migrating birds and other creatures really need to, to support that. So it's 103 feet. River area. Um, do you want one every five feet? What did we do? What did we do at the baseball? I was telling you the field. Did we do? You overdid it there. I we think, overdid uh, it there. <laughs> but I go one every 50 feet. No. <laughs> That's it depends on what, what you have and how, you know, you can just yeah. decide yeah. what you have. What does it need to grow in? Some of them five, some of them are seven feet, you know, when they're, when they're full. But that's a shaded half, area. Half a dozen is a good number. Yeah, half a dozen sound of of something that. Okay. So, so you're you're asked tree. for a planting plan. So you're gonna have to grab your plan again. Put it. Tell us where you're gonna plant these things. Get them separated as they should be, and um, and then bring it back in for our approval, telling us what what you've decided to plant. Well, I'll plant. You give me the list of what you want. You give me a list of what I can plant, and I'll, I'll come back with well, some. Pick, so those are five pick something that looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. Rhododendron, Mint Laurel, yeah. like a number of okay. things. Some yeah, of those, some of those are around, so that would be nice. Is azalea? Yep, yeah, that's all good. Okay. Yeah. So that's the kind of what I bought. Blueberry is good, too. You know, Holly? you could mix it up. Okay. They're native hollies. So Holly if we go, it's so basically six plants along. Well. If you get hollies, you got to get at least two, though, because they're male and female. They don't do that well. <laughs> they Mine do. does. You can take it out of my yard. It's there surprising. They're not supposed uh, to need full sun, but ours in full sun are doing great. Yeah. So if I go six along the hundred foot, we'll space them out evenly. Six across the and On then the I'll cake, just put them the chalk. Yeah. Sandy. And the only other thing I wanted to ask you about is that yeah. I did notice up by the driveway, and I keep asking you, are you going to redo the driveway? And you say no. No, I, I wasn't. To. I wasn't really going to do it because I have a whole. There's a whole grade issue. I might fill a couple of spots in with a little bit of concrete. So I'm not redoing and the driveway. And what is that half circle driveway? Is that staying or going? That's staying. Okay. Yeah. That's um, hard to get in and out of. Yeah, it's well. It, it, my problem is I don't have any parking. If you drive down that driveway, that driveway is a very steep driveway. You could you couldn't literally park. You can, when you get down to the bottom of the driveway, it's fine. But you literally. If you parked in that driveway, it's just too steep. So I, I just, you know, then I'll be able to put retaining walls in and having all the neighbors come in. <laughs> then you guys will be able to 14 hours. So I'm going to kind of leave well enough alone. So up by the driveway, the yes. straight one, there, the natural vegetation kind of, kind of extends towards it. I mean, I'd like to... You know what's going on there? Do you want to leave it the way it is? What I, what I, if if it's okay with you up where it is? I, if I if I could take our half of the pond hypothetically, if I'm saying it right, the stream, and just clean it all, and then whatever you'd like. I mean, I'll rake all the leaves. Out. No, I'm just worried about what what you're what you mean by cleaning. We'd like whatever's on the right there that leaf litter. We need that there. That's okay. That's yeah, but that big pile of brush and, yeah. and trimmings that's got to go. There's some things you can take out of there, I and mean, I can go back down there again would you, would you, would and kind of go through it with you. <coughs> However, I mean, if but you I, can't I'm clean it up like a, you know, like a like, golf course, right? Or anything I, like I, that. Um, so it just—it sounds like you just kind of want to work with what's there on the property. So this has that However, natural vegetation that kind of comes out. So why don't you <coughs> just leave that? Whatever you uh, once I, after I spoke to you, we, we, we discussed and we, we agreed to come, you know, with you guys and get whatever, however you want to. I mean, for for this particular property, I see like it would be good to stay away from the road, to stay away from the road salt and the damage that snow banks can do, you know, so not right up to the road, and 
making sure that there's good coverage between the house and the resource area so that you know there isn't a direct um, connection there. Almost a natural fence with these plantings. Kind of low six, it's not gonna be fill much in too. All right, I'll give, I'll, give you, I'll give you 8 to 10. Don't worry, all right? We'll put it a little closer towards the street, fill it in a little bit more. Is that well, no, I was thinking, you know, to it, protect the plants by moving it back from the street because oh, okay. I don't know about right. I don't know about you, but, like, right. mine, mm -hmm. I have two of those my grass and my plants right next to the street are, are gone. Mm -hmm. You know, so and they take a hit every winter because of slow. Yeah, and, and because of the winter, through. because of the huge snow banks and all the snow and sand and mm -hmm. salt. And Would you be okay if I... Met with Chuck and we could go over some options and then I, I would put it in some sort of a plan for you guys and you yep, guys. Yep. You bet you. I trust Chuck need, to. Do, does he need to come back with a plan or just to submit it? No, just submit it. Submit it. Well, unless you have questions. About I, I think it. if you can do some landscaping in the backyard, you might see that too. I don't. Yeah, I'm not really doing a whole lot in the backyard. I, what it is, is 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 we purchase it to, to, to resell it, and I only have so much money in the budget to be honest with you. And I don't have a big budget for the backyard. I mean, I, I might try to put a little, you know, some flowers out front, a little sod on the front, and then maybe grass seed the back. I don't. I uh, truly, and I'm just being honest with you because I put all the money into the boilers, or you know, the different things that came up. And out, so. yeah. My wife's a big landscaper, so believe me, she's more mad than you guys are. So. <laughs> My budget was two hundred dollars. Yeah, I said okay. We get two hundred left. Right. And then wrote at the end of the budget. Landscape always takes the hit. Yeah, right. like, I think it's important to get those brush piles bucks. out. Yeah, oh yeah. Get those brush piles out and get it, get it. Because once it yeah, once can, it looks nice, people will tend to keep it looking nice instead of turning it into. I just didn't want to go out to your property and do anything that would disrupt no, the no. conversation. And since no, thanks for coming in. Do, do you want something visual there, like some of our little signs for the new owner? Do you want? That would sure to help. the new owner. <laughs> that, that, that would really, really help. Um, you know, we don't really have guarantees that, and, and you know, I'm sure you're a fine, trustworthy seller, house seller, but you know, we never have a guarantee that either the information is going to be communicated or the, the person who hears the information is going to accept it. And, and take it seriously but he's already so. within the 25 foot and it sounds to me like it's not a well-defined line where would we put them and then, then we'll be here till midnight yeah yeah i wouldn't put them in i i think it's fine the way it is okay i mean they'd be yeah. in inside the yeah. house yeah what's this here oh that's <laughs> a conservation you no, can't go well, past that line i no, think you, you would just put one at the i would put one so there's that rough area, that natural area. Just put one on the fence or something down by the fence on one side and something up by by the road. How about, how about this? How about a concrete We don't have, post? we have three to choose from. Please don't ask me the other two. Yeah. But <laughs> one of them no. says, uh, you know, protected area, something like that. Well, or that be good. if he's going to have all this concrete, maybe he could put a little bound in the ground. Well, now I'll have to come back because I'll want to put concrete on the concrete. See how it goes. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> that is no, I'm only kidding. Okay. But if you, would, have, if you guys have a sign on the property, it's not a problem. I wouldn't put any in. I just do the plantings. And and just trust that the communication's gonna that the I, new I property. You're gonna have to. Okay. Sounds like I did a straw poll as you talking. So okay. okay. I have something prepared, but we have we have. No stockpiling um, within the 35 foot when you're digging out the sauna tubes. Uh, planting plan before. I'm, I wrote down the occupancy because we don't have any power other than that. And I'm a signer on that occupancy. I'm sorry, I didn't. Understand. So the building occupancy, which yeah. you're going to need right. for that planting, and we need the plan and the plants in the yeah. ground before the occupancy. I'll put the plants in tomorrow. Great. No problem. Um, and then my guess is, right my game. guess is he's going to need a certificate of compliance before he sells it. Just the occupancy. No, no because it's an anything. RDA. It's an RDA. It's an oh, RDA. right, yeah, right, yeah. right. Um, and right, then you you're said, right. Occupancy. We said, uh, we said six plants, and you raised uh, yeah, us by we'll, four. Yeah, yeah. We'll, put in, we'll make it look six. Sorry. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So I could bring more neighbors to complain or something. <laughs> Got to work on that. No, I'm oh, sorry. For the next sorry, you got the wrong one, dude. But it's good that you signed that. Thank you very much for taking the time. I'm sure you guys. Does that one say Duffy? Duffy, yeah. Oh, good. Keep going.
that the right one? Yeah. You're the lucky one. Oh, you volunteered. All right. All right, we'll sign this. Tomorrow's good. You can give me a list of what you want. Just call. I'm here, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning so you can come in. Yeah. Thank you. Can I add something to this for signing? We didn't sign this last time, but we did approve it. It was uh, Boston Gas, Conoco yeah. Engineering. Yeah. Let's do it. You don't need to vote on engineering. No, I think it was all set. And then I have an emergency permit. I think I lost one at the last meeting. That can get This can get signed, too. There's three things coming around. That's a real emergency. This is the DOA. Yeah. Date on arrival. And as you guys are as you guys are signing, I uh, got a oh, letter from 29 Gavin Circle, their lawyer, requesting us to um, um, close out the enforcement order. All right. But I'm reading through the enforcement order, we needed a couple of things, which I don't think I got, unless somebody got these sent to them on their own. That's what they. So the commission has not received their survivability, survivability their what? report. Oh. Survivability report. And that, that doesn't have to be an elaborate report. It needs to be something. So I sent this to them on April 30th and haven't heard anything back from that. Although in his letter he said one has been done. So we're looking for a survivability report. I asked that we would go and do a site inspection. And then obviously if it's fine, we'll sign it at the next meeting. Do we have, um, don't we need some, something comparable to an as-built drawing? It, it really just said a uh, simple, it didn't say simple, I don't have the paperwork here, but it said uh, a report. We had a plan, we, we had static. a plan that showed, showed We have a stuff. plan, yeah. but I don't think we asked for an as-built, but I can check into that. But I did read it before I wrote the letter, so I'm going to say it's probably what, not What is this thing we've been asked to sign, it's this emergency a, certification? It says next meeting. That yeah, but what's the address? Yeah. It's for... 28 it's Lindsay free. Lane. It's probably for free. Um, here, look at that. This page. Large oak tree split in half. Twenty-eight Lindsay Lane. L I N D S A Y. Okay, any minor projects? No. What does the OA stand for? Determination of the How about minutes? Well, I, I, moved. I was asking about minor projects. Thanks. But oh. you have any minutes? Oh, you have one right next to you. Yeah, no minor projects, right? Nope. No minor projects. Yes. Any comments on minutes? Mm -hmm. Who seconded? Looks like just put somebody's oh. name in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> put me in. No, you made the motion. Oh. Don't you can't put second me in. your motion. Oh, you said uh, Scotland Road wasn't on there, but it is. Put me in. Second oh, page, gotcha. bottom. Okay. Of what? The minutes or the agenda? The agenda. Second page, bottom. Well, oh, second page it. above yeah, bills. Scotland Road's there. Got it. All right, what about the seconded by? Oh, Brian. I'll volunteer. Okay, Becky. Let me read this, uh, Anika, if I could. This is the standard language. This was happened to be in one. Oh, it's in the one for 241 Pearl Street. 
It says the owner and all future owners cannot cut healthy native trees with a diameter breast height greater than four inches between the footprint of the new structure and the wetland resource area, including inside the 25 foot ZNV, or it's 10 foot buffer zone. That's what our intent is. They cannot cut anything between, in, between the structure and, and the resource area. Is this, uh, that's what's written on the... That, that, so the first this one that is, came from, that came from Azalea Circle, if anyone remembers that. I remember that. Yeah. So that's where it came about. Uh, I had to look way back. I thought we used it many times, but we only used half of it. So you can't cut anything, even if you're like 100 feet away. Well, is that what's well, you have no, to understand no, we're, it's really a circle, and the reason why we wrote it is because they were building like on the 35 foot 30, line. 35.2 feet. Were, yeah. And they cantilevered, that's when we came up with the cantilever yeah. part of our so if that's the why I think it's if the structure is 80 feet away, we're not going to include that clause. But it's confusing to me. It's To me, if I read that literally, you can't cut a tree. Yeah. That's, okay, that's okay, what so it says. Okay, so rewrite it. it that's what it's it says. Got, you got to, it's got to be clearer. I think Why the 35 that's foot. what we intend. That's our so intent. You don't, what? We don't want any, for a structure that is close to the 35 foot setback, we don't want any trees cut between the structure and the 35 feet or the resource area. Okay, then say so that. Let's say well, that's that. That's what it says. No, I think it, no, it I doesn't. Think, yes, it does. It says no cutting of healthy trees between the structure and the resource area. Yeah, but the, everyone's uh -huh. gonna think their structure is where it is, which could be not 80 feet away. But we only insert this. We, we don't have to insert it in every case. It's only when the structure is Well, what's is the line where it really makes sense? Area. Is that line 35 feet? Can we take structure out and just, just emphasize 35 feet? Or Can we emphasize 50, 40 feet? Or is it, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I mean, that would be clearer. Whatever that. I think that's perfectly clear. You might not agree with it. But it's perfectly uh, clear. So it's, no, but I guess I guess what he's saying hard. is, how can we make it so we don't have to choose what it goes in? We can put it as a standard item. And it's also nice to have a boilerplate thing that, where it right, works yeah. all the time. Right. And I don't have to. I can just go. Oh, that was a great permit. Everything we really talked about it, so I know that's all refreshed. Let's just use it again. So what's that magic number? I mean, if someone came in and they were sixty feet away, Jamie, would you be comfortable? Would you want to put that that clause in there? Um, probably not. Fifty feet, forty feet. I mean, where where does it start to get concerning? I, here? I'll tell you. If if let's just say take forty feet. If it's forty feet, and it's already a lawn, no big deal. But if they're cutting down mature trees right up to that forty foot level, I want to protect everything inside forty feet. I see what you're saying. It depends upon what's there now. Yeah, yeah. It's pre development existing trees. But if it was 50 feet, then work 50 feet away from the resource area is eligible for a minor project permit. I know. So I, I think 50 feet. If it's 50 feet, we wouldn't include this clause. So maybe 40 feet. Generally. Well, why don't we write 50 feet on it since it kind of hooks in with the minor project permit? I, I think that I understand what you're saying. If someone has, if someone <coughs> buys a house and it's vegetated right to the edge, that you know this is forced and it's always been forced, that they shouldn't be able to cut it. But in a way, they have an opportunity to cut it with our with our bylaw. They can actually cut it if they can prove that they're not harming anything, right up to 35 feet, right, not right up with to 25 this, feet. Not with this cause. Exactly, right. but why? It does seems like which is a little bit of a change from kind our of different. Precedent. Well, I think the, the reason we want to change our precedent because what people were doing, if you'll remember, time and time and time again, they're building their structure 38 feet. Yeah, I'll give you that from example. the resource area, yeah. Yeah. and then exactly. either they or more likely the next owner would come back a few years later and say all these trees in that. 35 foot or 25 foot setback or, or the 37 or a threat to my house and I'm going to cut them all down. Yeah. And we were just losing yeah. our buffer zone yeah. is what we were doing. So we no longer there. had a buffer zone. Yeah. 
So. So I understand so why you want to only insert it on, on, on certain cases. That makes sense to me now. Because you wouldn't necessarily have to put it in if they're putting a house in where there's existing lawn. You right. don't really need that statement. Right. Nor would you want to have it. I mean, if they had a tree out in the middle of the lawn there, and, and you know, it's not a huge deal. But if they're coming in and it's just native forest or whatever, then that makes a difference. Right. And we, when we issue the original permit, if it's like... For example, something like Main Street, where it's totally forested, we would issue the permit, and in that permit, it would identify which trees they could and could not take down. And then this clause would say, that's it. You can yeah. take down those we approve. You're not taking any more down, and subsequent owners are not taking any more down because that buffer zone is important. I think what's important is that first, the there, it, sh it should always be in every single one. We should just work on the number. So a lot of them I, you I want to disagree. protect the I think feet. every situation is unique. I think we just said the same thing. We should insert it in every one, but just work on the number. So the no change the number in each one. Change in, well, yeah, change. So we're if you're you're saying let's protect everything if they have, the guy never took out a saw. Well, the number is going to be closer to sixty feet at that on that one, you know. Depends on where the structure is. Yeah. But aren't we always protecting the twenty-five foot area? Are we always okay, protect, trying to protect was, some of the thirty-five foot area? That was a given. Twenty-five. Twenty-five is a given. I'm a thirty-five. Little, I'm a little fuzzy on the thirty-five now, though. You want to? In, in our regulations, the thirty. The, the, the intent written in our regulations at the thirty-five is that additional ten feet no build into the ground to not damage the root zone of everything within the 25. Right. It so came, the came purpose out of, of the no build is so that you don't cut those roots off. It came out of the necessity that people, we said 25 and people were building. So right something sitting on top of the ground would be okay. But if it goes into the ground and affects the root system, no, not I think not in the okay. thirty-five. Nothing's okay. We, I mean, for example, this uh, retaining wall. It's not okay. Is not okay inside the thirty-five. A detention basin is. Right, because it's a stormwater structure. Right. A, I mean, a slab uh, on grade is not allowable. Because that could affect the root zone. Now, is a swing set. That's allowable, different. perhaps. That's different. Perhaps. Everything. So. So. So okay. What about a fence? Because that lady with Wait. the playground was twenty-five feet yeah, away. We from generally allow a fence in the twenty-five to thirty-five. Even though you're saying that goes in the ground. Yeah. I, but it's. I think it's the, the impact to the. The ground, I think, is what and the, you understand why this is confusing to yeah. me. Yeah, I I, I'm having a hard time with all of the I typicals. Think, that and I think, and I think for yeah. the fence that came before us for Adam's Way tonight, the fence was previously permitted during that development. As not the, the new fence, <laughs> not the new, no, not the new fence, but the new pre existing fence is fence no closer she, to the wetlands than the existing. The pre-existing fence that's between their pool and the wetland. Well, the whole pool was in the 35 foot. That right. that whole that whole thing was right, right. in the 35 feet. It now was. that now, if I remember yeah. correctly, that fence is Absolutely. like is not a solid fence. I think it's a I think it's a metal rail fence that's really low to the ground and it's it's kind of a <laughs> it's kind of open and the holes in the ground are spaced out, so it's. I think our concern is the barrier. The barrier either to <coughs> water flowing this way or a barrier in the ground this way, like a retaining wall has to be towed into the slope. Right. Um, those are structures. Foundation wall. Yeah. Yeah. Although we did have a disagreement about a um, spillway at one point. Yes, we did. But we resolved that. Yeah. Oh, is that a big mess, too? The guy that owns that house, the Bethune, that has that spillway, he, he wants to re-engineer it to make it smaller and bring it up and not retain water. Is he, is he put together a permit? Is he ready to come before us? 
<laughs> not retain. He the knows water. that if if he comes up with something, he needs to come before us. Okay. But he's working with the engineering department. Okay. I'm not okay. sure if that's the right term. Well, They're I, avoiding him, and he <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I think these are important discussions, but I I'd like to make sure we're through the night's agenda items. Um, and I'd are. like to, if you guys would like, we can put, you know, discussion of of uh, tree cutting. That could be quicker too. So let's get on to the next one. Okay, uh, timber next swamp. Timber next swamp. Oh, okay. we went to we went to the uh, selectmen's meeting. Oh, the hunting. They yeah. thought it was great. They approved nineteen signs, and uh, plus extra. Well, when we need it, <laughs> we need it. It'll be so. The you know who's paying for this is the, it's coming out of the um, town manager's fund. So. When we need extra, we could ask, but these things are not going to go anywhere. No. Um, so 19 signs, four on the interior that say no hunting <clears throat> or discharge of firearms mm -hmm. by uh, order of the property owner. And ours are going to say the very same thing by order of the Conservation Commission. And we'll have to go around and identify an area. So um, final stages of getting that together. I so. thought we already had the plan where the signs were going to go. We did. And they we do, to... but that's, you know, that's a dot on a map. I mean, where is it really going to go? So I have to go out with DPW and do that. Put them, actually put them on something. Or While you're out something. there, Castine Field needs signs. Yeah, too. let's get Castine <laughs> too. Seriously. <laughs> no hunting at Castine Field? All right. No, no, no. no, 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 no we mowing. already got the other signs. <laughs> All right. No mowing. No, no let's hunting. find those signs. All right. Oh good idea. God. So that went well, I think it was, and then they set a set up a uh, firearms committee to review the bylaw. Um, did did they talk to the person who they think did that, and what you know? Did they get that all resolved? All that equipment <laughs> taken out of there, like the ladder and the and yeah, the forklift. Was, was like no um, wildlife cam and lock and all that stuff and. No, that's um, I you know I wrote an email to the town manager and I said um, I said I thought this stuff was going and that was well before this meeting with the selectmen and I've never okay. ne heard a response. It's really kind of outside of my my yeah. area, yeah. Um, and I wouldn't be the guy to, to talk to anyone about that. I, was, I don't even think it's in it's so it's not even in town hall. It's on it's on sports. private land. The wildlife cam you told us was on the private land. Yeah. Well, there's a plus and minus to that, but I'm just curious. I mean, I just think it makes the town look bad if word got out who owns this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it should be moved. It's, it's great. So, <laughs> and. So, and that's why I'm surprised it didn't happen the first time it was asked because it's just, you know, it seems people strange. are going to say very the, say it louder and louder. Very strange. Okay. So, so um, it's moving forward and uh, I mean, I could, I could go up. talk about that Sounds again fun. with Bob. Okay. So emergency permit, we are all set on that? Yeah. I think we signed it, right? Okay. Administrator's report. Okay. Well, I, I did it while you guys were signing things. It was... Uh, Gavin Circle, I don't know if you have any questions, but that's my plan is to, to get the report yeah. and then to request a site visit to go out there and look and then now you have to remember one thing that when me and um, oh my god brain trees here who's our old uh, beard our old Will uh, Will sorry our me and Will went out there and we told um, we told the owner that. It's, the volunteer growth is really growing in inside the fence area and then he didn't have to put in some of the stuff. The woody material he did have to put in but he didn't have to plant anything else. Um, so when we look at the plan and we look inside the fence, you know, you know it's, things have changed. Okay. have to remember that part. Okay. So if we're looking for good vegetation, I think that's happened. I think so too. Yeah. But counting what has happened and where and stuff might be good too. Um, right. Scotland Road. Enforcement. Uh, Scotland Road. Um, so, what do they tell you when, when you're in trouble? Call your mom, right? So since my mom doesn't work here in Reading, I called a mom, 
and uh, we went down to Scotland Road, which was Anika, and uh, it really worked out well. The guy, um, oh, right, right, right. they came home from school when Anika was able to get there, and we nice. got this conversation going and explained what's happening, and they were completely unaware of the jurisdictional area and what the responsibilities were. So the plan is to <clears throat> find a plan, doctor up the plan, something what we talked about, a no-touch area, which would pretty much be that 35-foot zone, and then have him propose, because he believes he wants to manage the rest of this area, have him propose that and put in a permit to actually do that. Yes. Sounds good. Yeah. So that, that couldn't have gone any better. If I remember correctly, we voted last time to send him a letter and ask him to come to the meeting. Yeah. And we voted to do that, and it didn't happen. So, so you want me to go back and... Uh, well, he's got to come to the meeting. He's got to file Yeah, he's going to come to the meeting. He's going to come to the meeting. The I, reason I, why... The reason why there was an on-site, a spontaneous on-site visit is one of um, this gentleman's neighbors um, called in and said, there's stuff happening out there right now and, and you know. Yeah, I, I don't think you can look at it in a vacuum. I mean, maybe that, does that make a difference to you? Someone called up yes, and we had to yes, go back I, down I there. I wanted to talk to him and hear their explanation. And I wanted him to come to the meeting. You, you're going to have that opportunity. I don't yeah, see how it's Yeah, but it was supposed changed. to be tonight. Well, I was with the chair, and this is what we decided. But the vote was five zero zero to ask him to come to the meeting. I don't think you can ignore what the commission votes on. Well, it, you know, like I said, we were out there talking to the guy, and uh, it seemed like the it seemed like a reasonable way forward uh, was achieved. Well, I don't. I think that when the commission votes, that we need to follow through with it. I don't think that you and Anika can change what the commission decides on. Well, I think we would have had somebody pretty upset if we just went down there and made them come to a meeting. It wasn't needed at that point. Well, now you got somebody pretty upset at the meeting, Chuck. Well, you're upset, but you weren't there, so you're reading it from a meeting. And, it, you know, I made a call, and Anika was there. And whatever the vote was, uh, you know, take another vote right now. Who, you know, who thinks we did what's right? I mean, I can't well, I, uh, have me, no options me, when you're out there as, talking as to somebody. Chair, let me just step in. This, this issue, yes, this is what was voted, and yes, the commission's votes should be respected and followed. That said, um, when this situation arises where there's a call, from the administrator that some support is needed. Um, I've let the administrator know clearly that I'm available. Did I remember this when the call came in? I did not, and that's my lack of memory, and I wasn't deliberately thinking, I mean, you could believe me or not, and, and you know, no offense is intended, or, or and no disrespect of any vote of the board is ever intended. Um, but when business comes up, and I don't recall this, I honestly don't, and um, you know, um, and I don't have the presence of mind to think to myself, well, I should probably go check the minutes because there's a hint of something about this. That was not followed through. There was no malicious intent, no desire to subvert the commission vote at all. Um, but an issue has been raised at this property, and if things can be worked on and discussed to the point that people are coming to the commission and they are ready to meet with us and we can get them here, then and I can play some role in bridging that gap and getting that cooperative in, you know, relationship started, I will do that. The problem is, Anika, you and Chuck made a decision what was acceptable. 
that decision should have been made by the commission, not by you and Chuck. That's why they were supposed to come to the commission meeting. You and Chuck shouldn't go and meet with applicants, meet with property owners, make decisions what they have to do and what they don't have to do, particularly after the commission has voted in the, in the opposite. I've explained my piece. I understand what you're saying, and I understand how it looks, but the truth of the matter is we have, until this week, had a part-time commission member. Therefore, the chair and the vice chair and other members of the commission have graciously volunteered to step in and assist and in the management of these projects so that we can get cooperative compliance. And so we're, we're coming from this place in terms of how the commission practices that people who are able and willing to step in, in the best interests of the commission, not for a power play, not because they think they have all the answers or they think they're totally right in their decision making, but to start the conversations so that we can get people here so the whole commission can discuss it. And that was the full intent of what I was doing that night. I think that would have worked if you have just told them after your discussion, please come to the meeting on Wednesday night. The commission wants to talk to you. Yep. And I remember talking to them and saying, when are we going to see you? Everybody wants to talk to you. And they said, I don't know. I got to talk to Chuck. I got to do this. You know, so I think we are in the works on that. And I think that's a good thing. And I solemnly apologize for disregarding that vote. So these people are going to come before us. I have every indication. I mean, I can't, you know, I can't, I can't guarantee that people are gonna, are gonna, are gonna show. Um, I want to encourage them to show. I want to tell them we're ready to talk to them. We want to clear the air. We want to get things straight. They want to get things straight. They don't want to walk around town with egg on their faces too. Most people. So. That said, I, you know, I appreciate your you voicing that, Jamie. Um, and I just want to ask, is there any more business? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to, what is it, adjourn? <laughs> Move to adjourn, is there a second? Second, okay. okay. Thank you, adjourned. Did you pass that back?